আমরা স্যার লাইভে আছি শুরু করুন ওকে ভেরি গুড মর্নিং এন্ড নমস্কার টু অল প্রেজেন্ট হিয়ার অন দিস ওয়েব বেসড প্ল্যাটফর্ম অফ ইন্টারন্যাশনাল লেভেল ওয়েবিনার অফ আরশা কলেজ অর্গানাইজড বাই ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ এডুকেশন ইন অ্যাসোসিয়েশন উইথ আইকিউএসসি সুস্বাগত মন at the very outset i would like to pay our homage to the great son of bengal pandit ishwar chandra vidyasagar today is his bicentenary that is 200th birth anniversary and pandit in the ishwar chandra vidyasagar the towering figure of bengal renaissance known for his contribution to the education and women's emancipation our humble tribute to the great man on this birth anniversary we will start the webinar by remembering the great personality now it is my proud privilege and on the part of my department to welcome our honorable chief patron and chairman of the organizing committee professor dr vidyagoti kumar principal arsha college purulia i do welcome him as the inaugurator of the webinar the honorable minister in charge and the president of the governing body of arsha college sri shantiram mahato consented to be present in the webinar but for some urgent engagement he has expressed his inability to present here today we really miss him but he also consented us if he uh, he, uh, he has any possibility to join he may join during the ongoing program in any duration we are proud to welcome professor dr dibendu bhattacharya professor and hod department of education university of kollani west bengal who is a renowned educator we accord him our thankfulness for joining us and accepting our invitation as the keynote speaker of this webinar within a very short span of time to glorify this occasion thank you sir I do further welcome eminent resource person Dr. Saber Ahmed Choudhury associate associate professor Department of Peace and Conflict Studies University of Dhaka Bangladesh I would convey, convey him my profound thanks for accepting our invitation as a honorable speaker of this webinar his presence will add a feather of glory to the crown of success of this program I do further welcome eminent resource person mr sajul rai assistant professor and presently unit coordinator of peace making and peace building in humanitarian and development studies at the school of social sciences western sydney university australia whose presence we certainly brighten the vicinity of this assembly i convey my heartfelt thanks to him for accepting our invitation as the honorable speaker of this webinar we are glad to welcome eminent resource person mr mehraj dindar assistant professor department of education government degree college banderwal university of kashmir who is present present here to grace this occasion we heartily welcome him as the honorable speaker of this webinar we are thankful to him for giving us some of his precious time I do further welcome all the honorable members of advisory committee and organizing committee of Arsha College for their assistance and cooperation to make this program fruitful. I heartily welcome the IQAC coordinator of Arsha College and organizing joint secretary of this webinar, Ms. Mimi Banerjee, assistant professor, Department of English, Arsha College. I would convey my profound thanks. for the support and cooperation to organize this webinar successfully i do further welcome all the performers especially gina takhtar gina takhtar who is going to perform today for joining with us to glorify this occasion with their wonderful performance and i would convey my heartfelt thanks to them i do welcome all my colleagues seniors professors officers non teaching friends and beloved students who have contributed much to organize this international level webinar 
without whom it would not have been possible to me for to hold such a mega event i do further welcome all the respective dignitaries participants from the different corner of the country for their valuable contributions to make this make this webinar successful i have also opportunity to welcome all the assistant professor and associate professors of the different educational institutions across the country their presence will surely add immense value to this webinar i also welcome all the delegates teachers research scholars students coming from different universities and institutions i do welcome all the academicians from the core of my heart last but not the least i do also welcome all the support staff for their direct and indirect association in organizing this event specially thankful to mr sanju das for supporting us i wish the webinar a grand success thank you now the session will start with an inaugural song that is the jhumur gaan the song of the soil of purulia by miss dina dakar welcome dina নমস্কার আমি জিনা ডাক্তার আমি আজকে যে গানটি গাইবো সেটি স্যার তো বললেন যে একটা আঞ্চলিক গান জুমুর গান এটা দিয়ে আমি খুব ভালো একটা ফিল করব কালো জলে কুচলা তলে ডুবলো সনাতন আজ সরনা হাকাল সরনা পাই যে দহর সন धारे चसे बधूमि छाई करवार झिरी हिरी बाकालो दे बोइथे बार मान आलो जले कुचल तले डुबलो सनातन आज तारा नाह कल तारा ना पाई जे दहर सन लोदिर धारे चसे बधूमि छाई करवास झिरी हिरी बाकालो दी बोई छे बारो मास 
ঝিরি হিরি বা কালো দিব বারো মাস ঝিরি হিরি বা কালো দিব বারো মাস Thank you, Gina, for this nice presentation. You bind the tune of this occasion with your excellent performance. Thank you. Now, I would request our Honorable Chief Patron, Professor Dr. Vidya Bhuti Kumar, Principal of Asha College, to do the speech. Please welcome. Good morning. Good morning to everybody in this international webinar. entitled rethinking of knowledge advancement and pedagogy in pandemic situation organized by the department of education of this college i express my sincere thanks to the invited speakers professor dr dibendu hotacharya professor and hod department of education university of kollani professor sajol rai unit coordinator of peace making and peace building in humanitarian and development studies at school of social sciences western sydney university australia dr sabir ahmed choudhury associate professor department of peace and conflict studies university of dhaka bangladesh mr mehraj dindor assistant professor department of education government degree college ganderwal University of Kashmir. Thanks to the participants and Dr. Amarnath Das, organizing secretary and HOD of Education Department, and other faculty members, Simuthi Swamisra and C. Soman Dev, both state aided college teachers, for their continuous effort concerning arrangement of these two days international webinar. Special thanks to. Mr. Sanjeev Das, technical advisor. In this pandemic situation, when arrangement of a seminar is practically not feasible due to the ban of gathering, the webinar only can be placed. Moreover, for net accreditation, we have to organize more and more webinars, either state or national. or international level by various departments of this college this college namely arsha college being situated on the bank of river bandhu and near the foothill of ajodhya hill in purulia district west bengal india possesses more than 1500 students within 11 years of its foundation in the year 2009 the special feature of this college is it is full of bolas mango etc trees area about 20 acres of land but the land surface is not equiplanar that is its land is up and down donated by the successor of let alikaron mahato of village arsha i express my grateful thanks to them for their unconditional donation the college in course of time is growing rapidly in academy sports cultural activity under the affiliation of sidho kanu bishwa university purulia in this time of pandemic almost all countries of the world are affected due to covid 19 and online classes are going on use of masks sanitizer social distancing are several measures for fighting against the human made corona virus the importance of such webinar is the only way for any discussion because physical gathering is strictly prohibited by the central as well as state government for the betterment of the mankind the process of lockdown for combating the spread of novel corona virus is going on up and on i congratulate all the participants specially for this critical situation everybody is waiting for invention of 
more effective vaccine through research which are going on throughout the globe. Hope in near future the problem will be solved for all human beings and removing global fear, the peace in the world will be established. But a remarkable rethinking towards knowledge, advancement and its impact on the field of education will be regarded immortal for the happenings in 2020. I hope this two days international webinar will enrich each participant through the speeches of these eminent persons by listening attentively and interacting as per instruction. Last but not the least, I am inaugurating the webinar for its smooth conduction, expecting its success that will be judged by you all by giving feedback. I wish your good health. Be safe by maintaining precautionary measures. I wish and wait for the day for total elimination of COVID-19 concerning betterment of you, me, and all peoples of the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We are enlightened by the fascinating and inspiring speech of Professor Dr. Vidyabhuti Kumar, principal of Arsha College. The lecture was so engaging and encouraging. Thank you so much, sir for helping us to take this webinar to a new level of knowledge enhancement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Uh, as I said earlier, that uh, our honorable minister in charge, government of West Bengal and president of governing body of Arsha College, Sri Santiram Mahato, uh, maybe some this, uh, due to uh, some urgent engagement, uh, he has expressed his inability to present uh, now uh, in this webinar and maybe uh, if, if he uh, can get any time he may join uh, during the session in any time so uh, we have to continue and we have to proceed to the ne uh, to the next uh, speaker so now uh, i would to request our honorable keynote speaker of this webinar and my respected guide, philosopher and supervisor, Professor Dr. Dibendu Bhattacharya to deliver his keynote speech. And Professor Dr. Dibendu Bhattacharya, uh, Professor in HOD of Department of Education, University of Kolani, West Bengal, who is a renowned educator. And Professor Bhattacharya is working as professor and presently as a head of the department. And he is uh, the former director of the Directorate of Dopen and Distance Learning, DODL University of Kolani, West Bengal. Besides, his rigorous career as a teacher educator for more than 20 years, he graced a number of academic bodies, learned societies, administrative positions in both state and national levels. He is an expert of various fields of education and psychology with special reference to philosophical and psychosocial behavioral analysis, teacher education in general. And he has written a lot of books on education he supervised so many students and I am lucky. I am also within the list of this large number of scholars for the awarding PhD and MPhil degree. And a good many number of these scholars of him have been successfully appointed as a faculty members in different universities and colleges throughout the state and out of state also in education department. Now, I would request Professor Dr. Dibendu Bhattacharya sir to present his valuable views in few words to enrich the academic assemblies. Please welcome, sir. Very good morning, all of you. Good morning, sir. 
Um, morning. Uh, I'm very much honored uh, to present in the international webinar organized by the Asha College, Purulia. And I am expressing my gratitude and sincere thanks to the college authority, college principal, Dr. Vidyapati Kumar, Sri Shanta Kumar Mahada, Minister in Charge, Government of West Bengal, Amon the governor of the organizing committee, and all of the members. And I, I am appreciating all of them uh, to organize such a very interesting and informative webinar they are able to organize. So congratulate all of them. And with this, I am just starting my lecture because the topic is very much interesting. And you know that the topic is related to, related to the enhancement of knowledge, restructuring of knowledge, advancement of knowledge, and that kind of knowledge, how we can correlate to the pedagogical perspective. So that is why uh, I feel it is very much interesting in the, especially in the such kind of pandemic situation, the topic is very much important because you see that uh, in present time, we have to change our pedagogical methodology. We have to change our thinking procedure and in a similar fashion, um, the uh, knowledge domain, knowledge domain in our educational sector that has been also changed in the in the way of such kind of social social process, and it is a it is a COVID nineteen situation which compelled us to rethink and restructuring our knowledge procedure, our educational procedure, and so on. And you see, last almost last seven to eight months, we don't have any communication with our students. We don't have any communication with our institutions. But yet, yet we have to develop ourselves. We have to continue, continue our educational process. So we have to rethink about the matter. Yes, it is uh, very much true that if we do not rethink the procedure, how we can able to reach the students' developmental procedure, it is not possible for us to have the development of the students. And it is quite challenging because uh, you see that uh, there are some uh, way, uh, ways of there are some ways of methodology that is how we can reach the students. And it is not only the informative part of the educational procedure. Suppose you see uh, in uh, honors level they are coming from higher secondary, in post graduation level they are coming from the uh, um, undergraduate level. So in an, each and every stage. They have to promote their developmental procedure on one basis of their informative aspect, knowledge aspect, and other. That is very important. They are, that is the humanistic development. That is their psychological development. That is their development of their mind, development of their attitude, development of their motivation, development of their so many humanistic approach in their life. So we have to realize that education, education does not mean to provide information in classroom situation. So what is the very important in, in pandemic situation that, that is we have lost, we have lost such kind of communication. And that loss of communication, that loss of communication compelled us, compelled us, compelled us to have a huge gap, huge gap between students' development and the teacher's teacher's role, and that teacher's role we have to rethink. Because because only suppose in, in, in case of uh, primary classes, suppose you know 20, 20, 24, 5 into 10, 6 into 12, but that is not the role of teacher. Just to multiply, multiply, that is not the role of teacher. The role of teacher with this information in primary level, they develop the students develop their abilities, develop their different forms of 
cognition developed form of um, psychomotor development different forms of their effective development etc and that is how learning is very much possible in an institutional setup in an institutional setup which is very important and therefore therefore it is a pandemic situation which which compelled us to rethink to reshape to rebuild and restructuring of our education system so that we can able to able to advance our advance our knowledge pursuit and that is why i consider it is very important to import the thing the topic of the international webinar said by the ashra college is very much important because only only the taking classes through the digital mode is not the only criteria for the development of students or only taking the examination and evaluation possibility is not the responsibility of the college university etc so different form of measures that we will have to take in future so that their knowledge knowledge procedure their knowledge systems can be rebuilt and can be reshaped which they have had lacking in this present pandemic situation so that is the background so that is the background of this topic and naturally naturally uh, you see that in our education system the huge gap huge gap is the knowledge and the reality development of knowledge is one aspect and the reality of knowledge is another aspect and we are quite sure we are quite sure that there is a huge gap huge gap between the between the development of knowledge production of knowledge creativity of knowledge and the reality of knowledge so you see that in our education system we are always have the lacking of development of knowledge and our curriculum our um, different pedagogical stands of our different forms of um, uh, transactional procedure it, it is completely based on the information and that is one of the very important um, aspect we need to think for the advancement of knowledge we put you go to the class and read what do you mean by social change and saying the students please write what is meant by social change how the social change uh, the different different determinants of social change how that has been occurred what are the factors and the end what is what and then that is a form of um, traditional methodology of imparting learning in a classroom situation but but you know, we have to think about that too what is the essential part of our of our role in such kind of post graduation classes or under graduation classes only giving the no sense no sense no sense such kind of information so that is that is why why our our attitude towards learning our motivation towards learning our different contemplative aspects of our learning that is the biggest hindrance to to have our advancement of knowledge to have our productive form of knowledge in the present perspective so yes yes knowledge is very much essential but we have to realize what is the present reality of our education system and if you see from the from the very beginning of our education system and ending to our post education system we don't have any effort to produce knowledge to create knowledge to impart knowledge but what is our tendency to just go to the class and given what is the what do you mean by soi model of gilford what what is social change what is sangha philosophy what is that but that philosophy that sociology that psychology is in the book and it is 100 and 1000 of years ago that has been written then we have to class something we have to interpret something we have to we have to reshape such kind of knowledge we have to we have to different forms of research research to have a new shape of that knowledge that is that is the role of the teacher that is the role of the pedagogy for the advancement of knowledge and that is why we are lagging behind we are lagging behind from the western part of schools western part of the institutions and then that of our indian continent counterpart so yes the advancement is very much essential productive education is very much important but but we have to we have to move our 
challenges we have to move our uh, different um, uh, different procedures policies issues of our education education in such a way that we can we can develop our knowledge advancement of knowledge shaping our knowledge and structuring of knowledge so so you see that um, um, especially knowledge is very very difficult difficult that both which can be produced in the form of social science suppose you see you may, in case of uh, psychology sociology research you see you don't find any indian theory which which predicted the present form of social knowledge present form of psychological knowledge present form of research present form of um, historical perspective etc you don't see any single um, teacher uh, who can predict something which is written in the book and which we go through the um, uh, part of that book as a theory of omok um, uh, bosch strategies monroshi um, etc we don't um, found that count that uh, uh, part of theory knowledge etc because because we don't produce knowledge then what is our responsibility our responsibility to go to go to the class and see what do you mean by pia ji what do you mean by gardner what do you mean by constructivist approach what do you mean by shankov belland etc but what is your concept what is your concept that has not been imparted in the classroom situation and there there are you see that there are no scope of our education system which which should be guided and led by the teachers by the institution by the college by the university so we have a huge amount of lacking and which is again if we don't consider this, this kind of matters in future when uh, the new education policy gave a signal that private education enterprises will come in our educational uh, setup in india then what is our future suppose we have a institution in colony kolkata etc and there are a campus of school university then what will happen what will happen if we don't have any originality if we don't have any kind of original education we don't have any original philosophy psychology sociology etc and there the advancement is very much important and this is a pandemic situation which which give a give a um, give a uh, oh, to evaluate ourselves evaluate ourselves what is our status what is our position what is our future that is very much important so i consider so i consider um, in the form of reality in the form of reality reality it will see that um, actually we have classified knowledge into three categories right we can classify knowledge into three categories one is foundational knowledge one is existential knowledge and another is transformative knowledge so yes we can we can classify knowledge to elaborate the advancement of knowledge we can classify knowledge into three categories one is foundational knowledge number two is existential knowledge and number three is transformative knowledge and now now you see of what do you mean by foundational knowledge the foundational knowledge generally foundational knowledge generally stands for generally stands for foundational knowledge generally stands for the knowledge the knowledge which 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 is in the form of classical knowledge right which is the form of the word past knowledge and what is the example suppose in our um, different text books you see that is the form of master's degree you see there are different forms of philosophical idealistic school of philosophy realistic school of philosophy shankos philosophy etc this is the foundational knowledge and what is the existential knowledge the knowledge which which deals with the present form of knowledge right so what is the present situation which is going on whether those kind of knowledge is relevant or not in the present situation whether those context is relevant to the present year situation etc yes or no etc but and that is and what is a transformative knowledge that is a futuristic form of knowledge because you see you see in case of your mobile phone you you are looking for the future future mobile the today is 4g tomorrow will be 5g 6g 7g etc it will be changing technology is changing in a regular way because because they know what do you mean by advancement of knowledge and you see if you use a similar fashion 
like you have presently if you have 2g phone if you have the previous phone then you see that it does not require your present day present day prices because it requires the android technology it requires the present day technology but if you see the 10 years before a book of undergraduate level if you see 10 years before a book of post graduate in our country you see why the history geography bengali why 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 the book you see the syllabus is almost same and we just talking about the change of curriculum but actually there is no change of curriculum yeah, presently that is that is uh, written as motivation and now it is written as motivational aspects now it is motivational aspect present will be application of motivation so such kind of change is there but actually what the knowledge we are imparting in the classroom situation that is that is completely based on foundational knowledge based on foundational knowledge that is based on based on past and yes in case of some case some areas yes foundational knowledge is very important on the basis of which which we are actually um, we actually evaluate ourselves yes that is very important i am not talking about the, that is not very important but only foundational knowledge is not sufficient for advancement only foundational knowledge is not sufficient for our progress um, foundational knowledge can help you to develop yourself for the futuristic approach for the development of your creative knowledge for the development of your of your own knowledge in the present day context but if we consider the foundation knowledge is our past foundation knowledge is our present and foundation knowledge is our future then what will happen and actually in social science because of that attitude we are we are lagging behind and how much how much lagging behind we are we cannot imagine and if you see if you are asked to a foreign university to delivering a lecture regarding psychology regarding philosophy regarding social you see you, you have nothing to describe them because you don't know what is our what is our family structure in our country in our sociology book there is no information what is the family structure of our country whether it is nuclear in mode how much nuclear family we have how much um, joint family we have how much um, one parent family we have how much distraught family we have so, so different forms of social social barriers different forms of social structure which we have in our country which we have in our west bengal which are different states in our country who don't have any any information in our books to our our country you don't see in our curriculum there is no place of that so that is why we are talking about the foundation knowledge that is why we are talking about uh, till now we are talking about the marxian um, social chain where we are social chain sorry we are um, uh, different forms of science so different forms of old knowledge that is we are talking about and that is why and that is why you see that is why you see in our education system in our education system you see that that we are we are based on our foundational knowledge we are based on foundational knowledge but we don't talking about our 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 promotional knowledge our upgradational knowledge our our knowledge of the futuristic mode and so that is um, uh, we can consider that is one very important point we consider for advancement so foundational knowledge is very much important and second one i consider existential knowledge what do you mean by existential knowledge the existential knowledge stands for the when we are considering foundational knowledge in the present day form suppose um, in case of uh, philosophy if you consider you see uh, uh, vedanta philosophy is very much popular philosophy and you see that is that is um, that is interpreted in indian perspective by shankar vivekananda so that is why it is very much popular so that is the existential knowledge of that kind that time but yes it is the present day we have to interpret that kind of philosophy in our social context but you see that kind of interpretation we have we have we don't have such kind of interpretation interpretation in social science at least in our education sector so there are huge gap in case of existential knowledge and in the similar fashion you see in different forms of uh, psychology you see also the different development of psychology we read regularly and such kind of development of psychology has been written 100 years before and what do you consider what do you consider that 100 years before developmental procedure is still going on is still is relevant in our context yes it may be relevant in great britain yes it may not be 
relevant in our country. So different forms of reshaping our knowledge, different forms of exercising of our knowledge, different forms of research in our knowledge, which is very much important to convert, to convert foundation knowledge to existential knowledge. Because if you don't have existential knowledge, you cannot move the futuristic condition. But whatever the form of knowledge, whatever the form of education is, is because of the development of the next generation, development for the futuristic approach, development of the knowledge for the futuristic forms, futuristic knowledge can produce, can develop a stand of our own, of our own educational standard, educational, educational quality. So this is because there should be a relationship because of our foundational knowledge, existential knowledge and transformative knowledge. But what is the problem? Problem is like that. We are, we are, we are, we are standing in a platform that is foundational knowledge. We are not moving towards existential knowledge, not moving towards the transformative knowledge. And therefore, therefore, what will happen? If you just, if you just examine, if you just go to research, then you see, 10 years before, you just taking a book, 10 years before, if you're taking a book, just in the very much important in the present, in the present um, 2020, you see, there is 10 percent, if, if the maximum change you see, that is maximum 10 percent in post-graduation section and undergraduate section. And it is because, because we are in the form of foundational knowledge, we, we do not consider, we do not consider that, we do not consider that, Foundation knowledge should be converted to the existential knowledge, that is the present form of knowledge, and that existential knowledge is to be converted into the transformative form of knowledge to be interacted further. And so that is a lagging behind the, uh, what I am talking the um, our introductory part, that is, that we are seeking knowledge, we are um, exploring knowledge, but, but we have to consider what is the reality. In case of reality, that is, we are, reality is foundational. But the topic, today's topic, today's topic, you see, the topic is, the topic is advancing, that is, the topic is transformative. Topic is seeking, seeking knowledge in the transformative part, futuristic part. But we are now, we are now sitting, we are now sitting in the foundational part. So that is how it is very much difficult to transform yourself from, from the, from the initial part to the futuristic part. And that is why our education system to be rethinking, to be reshaped, to be restructuring, just by reshaping our own mentality, by changing our own attitude, by changing our own curriculum, by changing our mission and vision. And at least we should have the honesty. Honesty to face the, face the situation. We, have, we should have the honesty to face the challenge of the present situation. So that, so that we can, we can, we can accept the challenge of the challenge of the future. And suppose you see, it is, it is very much reality that within five to ten years, higher education, higher education have to face the privatization in education, which is already giving signal in 2020 new education policy. And because of that, so many important university, so many, so many universities which rank one to one day, one to one day, they will come to India and they will and they will set in campus in our country. But then, then how to, how to face those quality full university to our universities? So if we face those challenges, we have to face the reality. And that reality is we have to promote ourselves. We have to upgrade ourselves. And, and the firstly, in the form of curriculum, we have to change our curriculum. We have to reshape our curriculum. We have to change your attitude, we have to change your pedagogy, we have to change everything to face the challenge. Because if we see, you are just sitting in the room, we are sitting in the chair, and we are giving lecture in the classroom, we are giving notes to the classroom, we are regularly giving lecture about Vivekanam, about partner, about uh, social change or social stratification like that, it will not be able to change our education system. So we have to look forward. We have to look forward to what will happen in the future. What is, is our indigenous knowledge? What is our local knowledge? What is our local history? What is our local geography? What is our local sociology? That we have to explore so that we can develop knowledge in our, our perspective. And that is why, that is why, that is why we have to reshape our thinking, reshape our knowledge in the present day 
or tourist context. And therefore, you see, so many days before, uh, the American psychology are talking about the pragmatic philosophy, and they consider the reality is pragmatic. Why the reality is pragmatic? Because unless we have utility and value in our education system, we have the use in our education system, we have the utility in our education system, then it does not have any value. But if you consider, after passing education, master degree in education, what is the reality? What is the product of ours? What is the product of a teacher? What is the product of the students? What is the product of the institution? And you see the product is almost done. A, a student is passing from this year, 2020, a student passing from 2018, a student passing from 2018, you see, they have, don't have any reference from last two to three or four or five years. The knowledge, there is, there is no promotion of knowledge, no upgradation of knowledge, last five to ten years in our in Indian context, in our um, educational context in West Bengal, and what about the uh, country scenario? It is almost the same in all states in our country, because the attitude of our um, educational sector is like that, that is, we should have the foundation of stage, because we see in the history, that is in the medieval period, that is in the modern period, that is the ancient period, so that is history based on ancient medieval and and, uh, and in the part of in the part of modern is modern history. But yes, there is a huge um, development of the history because on the basis of the Western countries, postmodernism to so many development is there. And yes, it is in case of education, there are so many interpretations we have in our the Western country also. But what is the what is the contribution of ours? So that is very important. So so many years before when the Western countries are talking about the productive education. They are talking about the pragmatic education. They are talking about the utility and values of education. We don't think those such kind of words in our education. But uh, after 1990s in our country, when the education is uh, gradually is converted to the um, uh, commercial aspect, commercialization is somewhat, is somewhat we applied in our education system. When the globalization is the reality, so we have to think about the matter. The knowledge is also a kind of product which we have to develop. Because if you're always talking about gardener, 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 then what is our product? Then what, what is the certification as a teacher we have? What is the contribution we have? What is the contribution as a sociology teacher? What is the that has been going on in our surroundings? What are the social forces going on in our in our neighbor states? What are the different caste, class, religion, equation, and chemistry that has been going on in our surroundings, neighborhood states, countries, etc.? And that is a very much important and crucial point which we have to consider. And that is how we can create knowledge. It is how we can promote knowledge. It is how we can advancement of knowledge is possible in case of, in case of Indian perspective. And that is very much important to, to think about the matter because if we don't think about the matter on that perspective, what is happening? What is happening? Ultimately, ultimately, the other forms of our country, other forms of our knowledge of the Western countries and so many parts of, our, of the world, they will contribute in our country within 10 years. Within 10 years, and, and that is how we can we can eliminate our eliminate our own indigenous knowledge, and, and that is why it is very much and important for advancement of knowledge. I consider in the form of in the form of exploring our local knowledge, exploring our indigenous knowledge, exploring our own perspective, exploring our own own context, and if it is possible, then then we can say we can move further in our near future. So yes, the reality is reality. We consider reality. Reality is um, pragmatic, and similarly, similarly in the present day context, for advancement, a reality is also virtual. You cannot, you cannot avoid the virtual platform in a real education system. So yes, today is reality is pragmatic. Reality is productive. Reality is commercialization. Reality is globalization. Yes, that is very good. Besides, presently in pandemic situation, it is proved the reality is also virtual. So yes, to tomorrow's education system, tomorrow's pedagogy will go hand in hand in the in the traditional education system 
as well as virtual education system mixed with it that is called blended education system that is a flipped education system that is a flipped classroom which is the reality in coming days and we have to prepare ourselves institution have to prepare their them, themselves to face those challenges because unless they can develop such kind of infrastructure such kind of um, facilities in the institution institution it is not possible for us to face the future challenges and therefore therefore our reality is pragmatic our reality is productive our reality is globalized our reality is commercialized that is very good besides the reality is virtual reality is virtual virtual for the platform of education virtual based education that we have to consider in future in the either in the blended mode or in the online mode or whatever the form it may be but yes that is the virtual reality we have to consider and i consider besides that we have to consider besides the pragmatic outlook besides the globalized outlook we always have to consider that actually reality is epistemological reality is epistemological if you don't have knowledge you don't have anything if you don't have knowledge you can lose anything if you don't have knowledge you lose your creativity if you don't have knowledge actually in the you cannot face the challenge so we have to promote ourselves to develop knowledge develop our epistemological perspective in our education system so that we can face the challenges in the futuristic form of education so that is why i can consider uh, consider the knowledge based on foundation the knowledge based on exist existential knowledge and knowledge based on transformative knowledge is very much important important to consider to have a quality education in the present day context and therefore what we can say that for future education future education for advancement of knowledge we have to we have to not exercising knowledge we are not only exercising knowledge by but we have to exploring knowledge we have to exploring knowledge on the basis of what yes global knowledge you have to explore but besides that you have to explore indigenous knowledge suppose you, you see uh, sometimes we read in social stratification uh, our caste caste religion but we cannot um, study the caste of western countries we cannot study the religion of um, christian and of european country yes is it possible yes the study of christian religion is very important but what is the religious practices we have in our country we have in our state we have in our locality that we have also explored and to be to be the part of our curriculum and that is the challenge of the teacher that is the challenge of the educational institutions not only the sitting in the room and thinking in the room but we have to go outside the institution We have, we have to explore the society we have to explore the social social platforms social surroundings to explore knowledge to explore knowledge because no knowledge is not beside in your 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 uh, beside the chair knowledge is exploring the society it is the platform of the society from which you can have knowledge so exploring indigenous knowledge that is the another part of our education system and besides um, the exploring of indigenous knowledge we can say that explore knowledge in the classroom also because you see that uh, we don't have like the industry they have the um, they have the factory for um, producing different uh, different uh, commodities different products etc but we don't have like this but here we have only classroom for producing knowledge institutional set up for producing knowledge institutional structure for producing knowledge so yes that is very much um, rightly pointed out um, in um national curriculum uh, national curriculum same of 2000 2005 and uh, they are uh, they have a chapter and uh, there is a um, second chapter the learning and knowledge a pedagogical base learning and knowledge a pedagogical base that is a very important chapter i consider and why it is talking by it is written that the learning 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 not for only information learning for exploring knowledge learning for exploring knowledge so it is not the not only the teacher they can explore knowledge it is the students they are giving the opportunity to produce knowledge so that is why it is very important it produce knowledge to produce knowledge in the form of in the form of knowledge by the learners perspective so what do we what is the role of the classroom for learners perspective they can explore knowledge 
And what is the Dula picture? The Dula picture is also set in the um, National Curriculum Frame of 2005. And it is also stated very clearly the teaching for construction of knowledge. Teaching is not for teaching. Teaching is not for demonstrating. Teaching is not for pedagogical perspective. Teaching is not for giving information to the students, but, but the teaching for construction of knowledge. That is how you can have the advancement in our education system. So how you can advance by in a classroom situation will be like that. The students can even develop themselves, develop to explore knowledge, and similarly, teacher have the ability to construct knowledge. So that is that is how we can we can we can correlate, we can balance between the knowledge perspective and the advancement perspective. And what is what are the hindrances in, in between the knowledge and advancement? That is especially the attitude of the teachers, attitude of the principals, attitude of the vice chancellors, attitude of the policy framers. That is the problem. They consider, they consider, they consider um, the taking class is a sufficient condition. Yes, taking class is a sufficient it is right. We have to take classes. But besides that, besides that, so in, in case of promotion, in case of promotion, in case of different aspects, we have to consider. We have to consider how far knowledge we develop, what kind of knowledge we are giving students, what form of knowledge we are doing in the classroom situation. Yes, we are giving, in that kind of time we are giving different form of um, form of different um, journals, different form of um, write up, etc. But I consider you see that is not sufficient um, uh, to justify ourselves. But because you see, you see, uh, you do not have any book um, last uh, uh, twenty five years or fifty years. I see in Western countries why there is an Indian reference in education. In science, there are some differences in the Indian perspective. In science, in technology, there are some differences. But in case of education, you see some Western books. There are no differences in Indian educators, Indian. Let's say, first of all, they have the difference in the previous and present. But what is the last 50 years I consider? You see, there are no theoretical interpretation by the educators, by the teachers of Indian perspective. There are very few or almost no. And that is why, that is why we have to we have to reshape ourselves. That is we have to we have to giving our giving our giving our knowledge to, me, to have a to have a shape so that we can have the advancement in the present education system. That, that is how we can convert knowledge to advancement. And that is how we can we can shape our our foundational knowledge, foundational knowledge. To the transformative knowledge. That is how we can transform our transform our existential knowledge to transformative knowledge. So yes, ultimate target is the transformative knowledge. When you can transform knowledge, we can we can produce knowledge, we can expand knowledge, we can develop knowledge, we can create knowledge, we can construct knowledge. That is the ultimate reality. That is the ultimate target. But to have that, but to have that, we should have the pedagogy. We should have the attitude. Pushing up the, pushing up the different forms of restructuring, shaping of our classroom, etc. And yes, that structure we have, but that the attitude we are lacking, that is the motivation we are lacking, that is the procedure of examination system we are lacking, that is the curriculum we are lacking. So yes, that will be restructured. Otherwise, after the near future, we cannot face the challenge. So that is the problem. So so that is that is the uh, that is a, um, one kind of um, explanation from my part to how how the knowledge aspect knowledge aspect can go can go or move to move to advancement on the basis of on the basis of our effective domain our knowledge domain cognitive domain can how be a form of advancement on the on the basis of effective domain of our teachers of students or the policy framers, or etc. So that is that, that is our mission, that is our vision to have the advancement, because the advancement is our philosophy. Advancement is our is our mission and vision, which we have to which we have to consider in our futuristic form of education. And and what is the role? The role is to promote ourselves, 
we should explore ourselves, we should advance ourselves so that so that we can apply our knowledge, so that we can develop our knowledge, so that we can we can apply our thinking procedure in the form of in the form of application oriented knowledge. Right? So that is how we can develop our knowledge to advancement. And yes, in between knowledge and advancement. It is a big term that is called pedagogy. Yes, you have to look out also on that part. And I consider, I, um, I always, um, in different lecture, I'm giving you one of, one of my consideration, that is the perspectual pedagogy. Yes, we have the, we have the, we have the, we have the, we have to develop our perception, we have developed our senses, we have to promote our, our sense organs in our education system, so that we can develop knowledge. And you see, suppose when, uh, when you know that uh, how the, how the um, Oxford University, what is the mechanism of Oxford University vaccine, and you see uh, when it was published, published in the 2020, uh, uh, March, April, uh, when they published the way they are, they are Discovering the vaccine, what are the way? And you see, after they are they are discovering, you see, the whole world follow that that British technology, mostly the British technology. Even today's Russian vaccine, China vaccine, and most of the vaccine they are following the Russian vaccine, following the Oxford University vaccine. So you try to realize. Any any kind of discovery after discovery, you see that is not very very difficult. But it is your perception, it is your understanding, understanding the situation, understanding the problem, understanding the critical aspect of that particularity, then you can assure yourself to have that knowledge. And that is why, and that is why you see that pedagogical aspect of knowledge is very much important. And I, I, I consider in our know, education system, the perceptual pedagogy is very much important, and that perceptual pedagogy will be based on Based on based on based on the application of senses of students in the classroom situation, application of their of their working organs in the classroom situations, application of their thinking procedure in the classroom situations, and that is how they can apply their senses in in the educational setup. And it is possible on the basis of multiplication. It is possible on the basis of substitution. It is possible on the basis of shifting. I do not explain in detail what do you mean by multiplication and substitution and shifting, but it is defined that multiplication stands for in the perceptual pedagogy. You have to give different, different multiple actions to students. Sometimes what is the error? Suppose I am giving one singular point and explain, to explain, to explain. Which seventy percent students and sixty percent students have their interest, and forty percent students they don't have interest. And we are uh, giving our lectures, and we don't go there. They, wow, how much students they are accepting my lecture? How much students they are not accepting my lecture? So yes, we have to consider in whatever the situation. Try to try, try to option, try giving options. That is the multi platform. Giving them, giving them multiple tasks to the students, giving them multiple options to the students. So the multiplication is the procedure which, which can help students or perceptive engineering. Because if you have the multiple opportunity, you have the multiple task facilities, and if you have multiple interest, you have multiple motivation, multiple lower mental abilities on the basis of any task which you can select, then you can, you can able to develop your knowledge, right? So that is why, that is why, please don't in a classroom situation, try to variation, make variation in a classroom situation by giving multiple task analysis so that, so that students have the opportunity to give different multiple actions, multiple options, and they are doing so many things in the classroom situation. So basically, multiple multiplication, uh, how you develop the multiplication? Multiplication, we generally consider multiplication uh, of interest, motivation, or whatever the thing, content, etc. We initially concentrate, if we consider one student, if we, and if we consider, we are doing mathematics in a classroom situation. And if we consider the students are only interested in doing factor, 
or doing LCM or doing HCM or doing capitalization or doing whatever the whatever the um, uh, point uh, or chapter it may be, and whatever the interest is underlying of that student, we we are giving we are giving task on that particular point of that student. And if suppose you consider it is interest in capitalization, so we are doing capitalization. Um, in the classroom situation of that student. We are giving capitalization, different forms of capitalization, difficult to um, sometimes uh, change the difficulty level, etc. And this is how we can, we can, we can um, develop with interest to a particular point. And that particular point we can then multiply. And we see that once you are able to develop in interest in a particular point, it is, it is possible to develop their interest in the form of multiplication, in the form of motivation, in the form of abilities, etc. So multiplication is one point. Substitution is the second point. It, it targets to substitute interest from factorization to LCM, LCM to different geometry, geometry to geometry, etc. That is substitution is the options we have and students can be able to develop themselves, one option to another, another option to another, etc. That is the substitution. And shifting is the, is the form of uh, form of pedagogy. That is that is why when you just when you just change the domain, change the domain stands for suppose you are doing mathematics and you see that one student is not able to mathematics anyway. Then what you can do? You can do some puzzle. Some matters, some uh, doing jobs, not in the academic part. In the in the form of different ways, you try to involve students. Suppose suppose uh, you see in case of in case of different measurement. Uh, suppose a, a, a room, uh, a room most of they are they are rectangular or they are uh, square. Then then if you consider the, what is the what is the um, what is the um, Measurement of uh, room in the uh, form of in the form of area, and you see that the area means length and breadth. And uh, suppose we do not uh, able to do mathematics, but yes, it is possible. The measurement is 60. Uh, length is 60 and breadth is 20. So it is uh, 1200 square foot, and like that. So that is how that is how that is how you can explain the shifting when the basically students have the less ability in multiplication and substitution. So that is that is we in the we have the we have the chance to enhance students students knowledge level on the basis of perceptual pedagogy. So yes, what I what I am talking about pedagogy because there is a relationship between knowledge and advancement in connection with pedagogy. In connection with pedagogy, yes. Besides the pedagogy, the effective domain is very much important. The attitude of the teachers, attitude of the um, principal, vice chancellors, uh, policy framers, etc. Uh, even the teachers organizing policy, etc. Attitude is very important. But besides that, besides that, pedagogical counterpart is also very important to have that kind of advancement. So yes, knowledge is the initial part. Advancement is our future. And yes, the effective domain and the pedagogical aspect is a bridge which link between the knowledge and advancement. And with this, uh, by conveying our gratitude and um, conveying my thanks to all of them, all the authorities of the college and the um, participants, other resource persons, etc., I ending my lecture. Thank you, thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor Dr. Divinandu Mahadeva. Sir, there is... Sir, there is Sir? Mm, hello. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay, okay. Sir, uh, sorry, sir, I cannot hear you for, for
for the for the future time so, 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 so you have to you have to knock myself na yes no no, no no sir i am not i am not uh, going to just i am just thinking that your lecture has been complicated so sorry sir okay i come i complete my lecture okay no no sir thank you sir yes thank you professor divendu Oh, um, on behalf of the Goan Body of Arts College, and especially my thanks to you, sir. Uh, actually, the, your microphone, your sound uh, can uh, cannot do audible uh, for a few seconds. So I think uh, there is a technical uh, end of this lecture. So, sir, there is a questions uh, in. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, what, uh, what are the questions, please? Question, uh, sir, uh, there are questions uh, from Ujjal Mahato. Uh, how to how to grow the interest of the students to gather the indigenous knowledge? Yes, sir. Answer is answer is first. We have to we have to we have to look 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 up at the look up at our curriculum first. And if you see if you see World Bank World Bank. they are giving the four or five thrust point of our education and the first point is curriculum and if you see that if our curriculum is like that like that where it is the possibility to development of a local knowledge suppose you see in sociology we are we are reading we are reading the different western schools of sociology we are reading the different forms of religion of western side aspect we are going through different um, social groups that is also in the form of social uh, western examples so how it is possible in our education sector if you go to the sociology if even in sociological sociology department if you go to the sociological books they do not talk their own social setup is it possible to explain suppose you see family is the family is the family is the primary social group in our in, in our social sociological perspective but do you have any study detail study in our educational setup the so family as family structure in in purulia district family structure in calcutta family structure in other other um, uh, districts in west bengal and if those studies are not how we interpret the family structure and the social group what is the role of social group and what are the status and how those status of the social group can can interpreted by our education system can um, develop uh, our curriculum and those kind of knowledge can be included in our curriculum that is the social setup of our primary group in west bengal and that can be set up that can be um, set up in our curriculum yes uh, initial what do you mean by primary group what do you mean by secondary group what are their classification that is okay that is that is as per uh, global thought but when you can give examples then you should have the study of our local knowledge and that local knowledge we should we should include our curriculum and unless we are doing that what is the, what is happening what is actually happening we are talking about the old knowledge of the western countries we are talking about the old fashion of the western countries we are um, reading the divorce rate of western countries but we don't care we didn't don't care about what is the reality of ours what is the ours reality what is the ours family structure is there any relationship the family structure and achievement when the family structure is going fragmented from the joint family to the nuclear family what is happening the achievements of the of their children is it any relationship is they don't have any relationship and what is what is the actual what is the actuality so that is why that is why local knowledge is very much important and in future when we are shaping our curriculum while framing our curriculum we have to incorporate those aspects we have to giving importance on those aspects so that local knowledge local art local everything everything that can be that can be included in our curriculum system and that is that is why it is possible but that is how it is possible yes thank you ujjal sir another question is there from dr pranav bhatt assistant professor raigon university uh, how can you relate between the reality and knowledge through virtual mode in case of science 
on the basis of uh, in the uh, science okay. science science discipline uh, how can you relate between reality and knowledge through virtual mode in science discipline Yes, uh, um, in today uh, today's perspective, uh, anybody can clearly say that uh, we have to um, take help from the virtual mode, and we don't have any option other than virtuality. Because from internet, we have so many um, form of knowledge. Uh, and if you see, as a teacher, I, when I am uh, giving lecture to you, and you see, and on that time, if you see internet, you see uh, internet is more advanced than from your teacher. So it is very much challenging a teacher um, to combine with the um, digital digital knowledge and the knowledge of the teacher. But but try to understand what about the knowledge in the digital form that cannot guarantee the produce of knowledge. Suppose in case of COVID knowledge, you have the plenty of information. Throughout the world, have plenty of information, but that does not mean you can discover the vaccine, right? And that is the Oxford University who can discover. And there is a difference between the information, knowledge, and discovery. And what I am trying to say that there is a gap between knowledge and reality. Reality is Oxford is able to discover the vaccine. Not only the vaccine of um, uh, Corona, the Ebola virus vaccine is discovered by the Oxford group. Even the hepatitis B virus that has been discovered by the Oxford group. Then what is the meaning of that? Only Oxford can discover all. And what is the rest of the world? What we are doing? And if you see. Beside Oxford University, we are printed of silent. After the Oxford, Oxford University, we open our mouth. And that is the reality. And what we are, as a big country like India, you see that we are doing everything on the basis of information. But we cannot apply your information. If we ask you, what do you mean by COVID? You write telling the right told that if you know what what is what, you can have a good answer. But when I say that you are just apply your knowledge, then what is the Indian reality that you are unable to apply those reality in the form of knowledge? And that is why I am talking about that uh, whatever uh, science, whatever arts, whatever social science, we have a big gap between the knowledge and the reality. We have the big gap, and if we face the challenge in the future, challenge we have the if we want to face the challenge of the coming days. Yes, we have to promote our knowledge, apply our knowledge. What I am talking about, it is the foundation knowledge to transformative knowledge. It is the foundation knowledge to the advancement of knowledge. Otherwise, what is happening? I don't know, the real form of knowledge, real form of production, real form of application is not possible in the Indian counterpart. Okay. Sir, uh, there is another question from Udayan Mondol, Dr. Mr. Udayan Mondol, uh, Bakura University. Uh, how do you use internet or digital learning to the school education and training education? Yes, um, uh, it is also very much important question because uh, digitalization is uh, not only limited now in the higher education setup, it is, uh, it is uh, also very important in the um, edu school education also. And uh, last, uh, last um, 10 years we see that uh, computer teachers uh, are uh, appointed in school education, computer teachers are appointed in uh, higher secondary education. So yes, gradually it has been focusing that school education, um, computer education, or such kind of ICT is uh, getting its, um, its um, entry. Uh, so school education is gradually accepting uh, those form of knowledge. But what is my point that is, that is, uh, in case of in case of school education uh, or in case of college education, it is the role of the role of the school, or role of the college of the university to set up that kind of infrastructure, to set up the practice of that kind of infrastructure. If you see in our in our university and we see in, in our education department, we don't have any infrastructure of um, smart classroom, we don't have any infrastructure of um, ICT based classroom, we don't have anything. And it is like a, like a primary classroom. What we have in the primary section, it is the same in the university. So, so it is, we have to consider that. The infrastructural facilities we have to promote. So the students in primary section, students in college section, students in university section, they can, they can accustom to their, their practices of education in that 
that ICT based setup. And that is how they can able to accommodate themselves. But if you see different forms of basic knowledge, suppose you see in terms of science, suppose uh, one uh, very important aspect is there that is called that is called flowing of flowing of uh, water in the plant system. Hello. Because what is happening, we don't have any alternative. 
we are not we are not inviting students in the class because they have the possibility of attack of COVID. So there is no problem. There is no scope to invite them to school before December. After the vaccine is uh, okay, then it is possible to invite them or to, to have the face to face mode. Before that, it is not possible to invite them because we don't have the uh, such kind of infrastructure in our class. Hundred students in a class, and there are eight food gaps or six food gaps. That is not possible in our country because it will require playground. So that is not possible. So what is what should happen? Either we can um, giving a support, either we have we can giving a support in the school basis. Either it is possible on the basis of state basis or central basis, or or they have to they have to change themselves. Suppose we have a, um, we have funding from scholarship, we have to purchase that because what will the future education that is completely based on based on digitalization. So we have to based on that, and because of that, state will think about the matter. Uh, institution will think about the matter. University will think about the matter. Even municipality, other other different form of uh, uh, government, local government, they will think about the matter. And uh, this is a very very difficult question to answer because this is a realistic question. How it is possible to go uh, to the students those who don't have mobile phone? But answer, answer, the answer is almost unknown. But we have to fight. We have to different alternatives, and we have the we have the attitude to support them, to help them, and to stand uh, in front with the help of those students. And that is how we can have a solution in the future. Thank you, Principal. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, Professor Bhattacharya. We are the governing body. On behalf of the governing body of Pasha College, I am expressing my sincere thanks to you very much. Very much. Okay, sir, thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, another question can I ask? Okay, okay. okay. Sir, uh, there is another question from uh, Mr. Deepak Vishwakarma. How beneficial NPE? How beneficial? National Education Policy. Uh, okay, that is also a very, very, very good question. And uh, if, you see, uh, if you see the national education policy, uh, uh, we have almost uh, two years after. So, first, we have to analyze that national education policy. But what are the basic characteristics of that huge amount of conceptual change, huge amount of Infrastructure change that has been recommended uh, in the national education policy, and actually, uh, it is the time which we say actually what is the um, what is the fate of our education system. There are some um, there are some good aspects. There are some um, there are some aspects which we which we can uh, able to develop our education system. Otherwise, there, there are some aspects are there which. Uh, it is very much difficult to interpret whether we can face those kind of challenges. For example, I am saying that it has been told that in coming days, in coming days, education will be will be multifaceted, and it was suggested there will be no fragmented college. There will be no fragmented college, and that college and that college either will be either will be autonomous or will be the part of the university. So that is how, how a challenge it has been given to the college authority or the university authority. A university, a university, they have also all kinds of degree will be there. And that is the multidisciplinary approach of the university is suggested. And similarly, multi multifaceted college will be suggested. A college will have the graduation, a college will have the master's degree, a college college will have the BA degree, a college will have the MA degree, etc. That is a fragmented part of the college policy of education will be changed to multifaceted. And that multifaceted college will be will be converted to the autonomous stand. And it is quite it is quite necessary that autonomous stand will be will be converted to the private stage. And we are, we are not sure whether this kind of autonomous system, this kind of multifaceted university, this kind
system of autonomy autonomy is leading to the privatization of our industry and if you see into the banking system that is going to privatize into the insurance that is going to privatize this is possible in market economy i am not saying that but what is the situation of our country and you see only only 8 to 10% of our of our country that is they are they are in the organized sector and rest of the 90% students they are they are people that are organized sector that is a huge amount of person in our country they are they are they are they have had their life in a very uncertain condition is it possible for them to have such kind of Kind of like facilities, such kind of access to such kind of talent, etc. So that is how it is not possible to interpret whether it is very good, whether it is very bad, whether it is very moderate, etc. But it is the time, it is the time when I could can have the have the chance to interpret what kind of education policy will be. This is very good to change, and you see the total policies on basically the beginning of we have the British education system. Actually, uh, now it is converted to the American education policy. And where the policy is school years segregation, uh, or uh, like that, uh, flexibility is there. And such kind of education system, vocational education is a very good um, procedure, good opportunity to have in your years, which are on the basis of new education policy. But, 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 but what, what is the problem? UGC has been withdrawn. And you see, UGC, what is the role of UGC? UGC is not the statutory body. This is the granting modules. That is very much important. If withdrawing of UGC is a signal that you don't have any grant from the future central government. Right? And similarly, you see, um, it is the planning commission, which is now the Niti Ayo. Niti Ayo is giving the policy, but you don't have given the money. So, when UGC has been withdrawn, university grant commission, grant is withdrawn, that is gradually you are going to the privatized. You are the giving of the giving of the symbol. You are in the future five years, five years after, eight years after, ten years after. They are going to be privatized. So yes, privatization is a is a reality in future. But we don't have the we have the time. We don't have the time to convert ourselves completely. We don't have the preparation of ourselves completely to convert the autonomous system to convert the privatized system. Whether it is possible or not possible, whether we are able to face those challenges or we are not up to the capacity to face the challenges, etc. So these are the questions which are raised in the national education policy. And the time will say what will happen. Time will say what is right, what is wrong. Time will say what is good, bad, etc. Because it is not it is stated clearly this time is happening. But time will say what will happen actually. Thank you for the question. Uh, thank you, sir. We truly enlightened by the valuable and motivating speech of Professor Dr. Divyendra Bhattacharya, sir. We learned a lot and indeed impressed with the deep knowledge reflected in his lecture. It is very much clear and extremely relevant regarding the present situation. Thank you so much, and uh, I want to express my uh, sorry, as uh, there is some technical slap lag between the lecture, and that may cause some uh, misconception and uh, misunderstanding. So, so sorry, sir, and thank you so much, sir. Despite your busy schedule, you give us your precious time. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I would request that. Eminent resource person, Dr. Sabir Ahmed Choudhury, Associate Professor, Department of Peace and Conflict Studies, University of Dhaka, Bangladesh. Dr. Sabir Ahmed Choudhury, sir, is a man of great credentials as a scholar, as a well practitioner in the field of human rights, election, governance, education, and peace and conflict. He studied public administration, at his undergraduate and graduate level at the University of Dhaka and accomplished MPhil from the University of Bergen, Norway, conducting research on people's participation in the context of Bangladesh, which is exhaustive research on democratic protection of the institution. Mr. Samesh was awarded PhD from the latter of University of Australia and thus 
He made an elegant appearance in the field of democratic governance. He started his career as a lecturer of public administration, University of Rajshahi. Later, he joined in the Department of Peace and Conflict Studies, University of Dhaka, and now serving in the same department as an associate professor. As a consultant, Dr. Saber carried out different projects of UNDP, UNFPA, National Human Rights Commission, Bangladesh Civil Service, Administration Academy, Bangladesh Police, RABHQ, Planning Commission, and Social Science Research Council, etc. He has authored two books and many research articles published in national and international peer-reviewed journals. Moreover, a divisional co coordinator of Jatiyo Nirvachan Kordjubekhan Purishat, JNI POP, Dr. Saber leads election observation in his, in his country and plays a tremendous role in advocating democracy, human rights and peace. He is also regularly appearing in TV shows uh, as an expert on elections, democracy, political parties and local government. Now, I would request Dr. Saber Ahmed Choudhury said to present his views in few words to enrich the academic assemblies. Welcome, sir. Please welcome Dr. Saber Ahmed Choudhury, sir. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, thanks, Asha College, for organizing uh, this webinar. Uh, my special thanks to Dr. Nundini Banerjee and uh, Dr. Amarnath Das. And I am also thanking the organizing uh, committee, uh, Anish Shekhar Mokar, Dr. Ansari, Shurujit Patro, Suma Chakraborty, Shumende, uh, as well as Sri Shantiram Mahato, Dr. Bijapati Kumar, Professor uh, Birbal Saha, and uh, Mimi Banerjee. So, uh, as well as I am thanking Dr. Bhittapati Kumar and Mrs. Uh, Mimi Banerjee for this uh, lecture. I am going to uh, share a PowerPoint. Can you see my screen? Are you seeing my yes, screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is so good. my uh, today's lecture uh, is on innovative techniques to deal with the learners during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, rethinking pedagogy. At first, uh, most of us here know what is uh, pedagogy. Pedagogy is defined simply as the method and practice of teaching. It encompasses teaching styles, teaching theory, feedback, and assessment. If we just want to know the trends, the present trends in pedagogical thinking amount to a new emphasis on the individual capacities and needs of learners as well as learners are no longer seen as passive recipients of knowledge and skill but as active participants in the process of learning in this uh, situation pandemic situation we are seeing that these online classes are entirely different for students and their resistance to change does not allow them to the online learning environment. A lot of research has conducted on uh, these pedagogical things, online learning, 
and this research mostly focus on changing learning profile and the changed learner behaviors in online learning. If we go through the work of different scholars um, about online teaching, Hample and Sticker uh, in 2005, they identified seven key components for successful online teaching. And in these components, uh, it's a pyramid structure. Uh, in the bottom line, we find out basic ICT competence, specific technical competence for the software, dealing with constraints and possibilities in the medium. Then online socialization, facilitating communicative competence, creativity and choice, own style. We especially give focus on facilitating communicative competence, online socialization, as well as we will try to discuss own style, creativity and choice. Ampler and Stickler, they also identified that in online socialization, it uh, requires different skills than face-to-face -face learning, F2F learning, and it facilitating communicative competence uh, that requires task design and tutor interaction. So uh, from this uh, scholar's viewpoint, we can identify where they are uh, giving importance uh, regarding online classes, online socialization, communicative competence. Lillian J. Cars, they identified development stages of preschool teachers. There are uh, different stages and uh, here we easily uh, see that in the beginning of the developmental stage, it's novice teacher. So survival stage, do I have what it takes to be a teacher? And in the advanced beginner stage, it's consideration, how do I develop my competence, proficient, renewal, how do I say new challenge versus loss effectiveness? For expert teacher, maturity, generativity, what impact have I had on the lives of children, families? So these, there are different levels regarding uh, applying different pedagogical tools and uh, use creativity and other things. It's always good for the proficient and expert teachers. But who is in the novice level, just survival stays. It's not, you know, that wise for them to come up with different creativity and, you know, experiment. Because they don't have enough experience in dealing with uh, if you have a pedagogical thinking as well as pedagogical challenges. So when we are, you know, identify the development stages, always we should understand where uh, teachers stand. Regarding online teachers, they always learn from their mistakes. So by and large, uh, their own experiment and uh, they identify what are the loopholes of their work, uh, what are the, you know, basic weaknesses, and uh, after realizing these things, they can, you know, come up with different ideas how to deal with the situation. But it's not a big deal for the novice teacher because they are in the learning stage. But they need to understand they are, you know, uh, basic uh, weaknesses and always they need to, you know, drive, uh, have a drive uh, to 
find out their errors and to go for different tools and techniques. Um, in exercising uh, questions, uh, just time, you know, coming within 30 seconds. So, when in online, uh, are you listening? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, in exercise questions, because for, you know, this type of teachers is uh, very uh, important uh, for them uh, to deal with, you know, examinations, because in yeah, online examinations pattern are very dif different. It has some, you know, uh, flexibility, but the teacher need to uh, come up with different uh, sort of ideas and, you know, tools uh, in dealing with such kind of things. So online questions are, we know, time consuming, but very sophisticated and user friendly. And it could be uh, access anytime and anywhere. Features are multiple items, automatic saving. There are so many challenges in a virtual classroom. Uh, if we try to understand what are the challenges, there are so many, but I'm trying to identify a few. One teacher is asking question to any student, another one or two may drop by uh, during the classes, when you know, because for uh, unstable internet connection and uh, so many other things, uh, it could be happen. Peer and teamwork, which usually, you know, we uh, conduct in learning, uh, it's time, tough. It's tough in the, you know, this peer and teamwork in online sessions. Uh, we have a breakout rooms. Uh, in the breakout room, you know, apply such kind of uh, teamwork. But in the, you know, uh, in a breakout room, other members of the breakout rooms may miss the discussions of other, you know, rooms. So it's a little bit difficult to conduct, you know, such kind of um, tools in the online classrooms. Students may start making their way out and sometimes return later. So it's a little difficult for the teachers uh, to understand what's going on in the class. In the F12 uh, situation, we usually understand the, you know, uh, the ex uh, facial expression, uh, the, you know, expression of the eyes, we understand who is listening and who is not. And it's very easy for us to uh, apply different tools and te techniques to attract them in the classes. But from our experience, when we are in online mode, uh, it's very difficult for us to understand what's happening there. And for you know, unstable internet connections, uh, in most of the cases, they need to, you know, um, put their, you know, video in off mode. So it's also difficult for the teachers to understand um, who is sitting there or what's going on. That's why small group is always better. 
the work of Brown and Adler, 2008, they identified that the small groups are better from learners' perspective, and it's easier for the teachers to uh, deal with the uh, situation because it's uh, easy to control uh, for for them in that situation, and they can uh, interact in a more uh, close way uh, to the participants uh, if it is a small size group. It's very important, the synchronization of oral and uh, visual mood. From the work of Wang and Chen, synchronous oral and visual interaction is crucial component in online learning. So uh, it's very important to understand current online uh, learning management system. We know there are different current online learning management system, in short, LMS. Uh, we can use a uh, blog, discussion group, group email, etc. And uh, from our experiment, uh, experience in the Western world, uh, students are, you know, frequently using this blogs, discussion group, uh, group email but these platforms do not facilitate synchronous interaction which is a big problem so always we need to understand uh, as well as in uh, your online classes the synchronization of oral and visual mood is important but the thing is we have uh, different sort of problems um, um, economic condition of the participants, uh, internet connectivity of the country, so many things. But we need to, you know, uh, take care of these uh, things to adjust with this uh, situation. Change of learning behavior. Uh, from the work of Harrison and Thomas, 2009, they identified Online communication is superficial and it requires time to mature. Social interaction, bonding, and intimate friendship is different. Face read, lip read is difficult in a virtual classroom. Need more time to know others. We know that we are just experimenting these uh, online uh, platforms especially in the developing countries. And it's a new experience for the um, participants as well as the teachers. So uh, it will require some time to uh, mature or to cope up with the situation. In a classroom, uh, while in face-to-face -face, uh, mood, students are not learning only from their classrooms. Uh, they are learning for, from peer groups. They are learning from different other sources in uh, uh, F2F learning mode. And where social interaction, bonding, this kind of things are very you know, important and helpful. So it's sometimes helpful for them uh, to deal with the situation is good for their mental health. But we know this kind of things are absent uh, in online mode. And uh, earlier I discussed the face read and lip read things and what are the importance of uh, this kind of approaches uh, to deal with uh, the students and to make a class more productive. And obviously, in an online uh, mood, they need more time to know others. So we can apply uh, these small size groups where it's not possible. We need to use breakout rooms uh, more to, you know, uh, give students uh, opportunity to interact with each other. And it's always uh, easier for them when they are in a small number in a breakout rooms. Palmer and Holt in their work of 2009, they give um, emphasis 
on learner centered approach and we may call it automated learning resource delivery which is uh, very important for the success of uh, online teaching so now this is the question what is better to do in both mode f2f or online teaching training for teachers is always important but for online teaching teachers need special training because they are not familiar with the situation and they don't know how to deal with these things so if we need to go through this uh, situation we need to ensure the proper training for the teachers blended learning is always good online teaching is not substitute to the f2f learning so if we can uh, use f2f learning uh, just you know side by side it's it would be better for the participants to understand more through using these online platforms and we need to understand from the work of benjamin jenkins from university of michigan where he uh, identified that students are in the driver's seat in an online classroom so they need to give more importance and we already discussed why small size is good and we also understand uh, what is the importance of synchronous oral and visual platform or visual uh, approach we need to focus on the pedagogy not on the platform in the beginning while we are in an immature stage for using online platforms we give uh, more importance which platform is uh, better which pl platform has uh, uh, what features but always we need to give emphasis on the pedagogy thing text is always universal so uh, especially when you don't have stable internet connection uh, sometimes the students can't clearly hear you but the thing is if you have text so they can easily uh, read what's going on and words uh, about the you know lecture and it's better if all the faculties use same platform otherwise you know it needs a little bit of time for the students to adjust with different platforms and it's most of the cases unnecessary teacher needs to be creative in preparing questions and using evaluation method so it's also very important because already we discussed that uh, preparing questions uh, and uh, evaluation method it's not you know up to the uh, mark um, in terms of present uh, situation but uh, teachers when they will uh, think they need to you know give importance to uh, creativity in preparing questions group chat platform is another tool where uh, students can easily interact with the teachers and uh, it's also easy for the um, uh, students to understand uh, what's uh, going on and sometimes if the students uh, couldn't learn properly from the uh, f2f learning or the you know online learning platform they can easily communicate uh, with other um, in the chat groups and it's easier for them to ask different questions uh, to the teachers so there are so many uh, other things uh, in this you know um, discussion on pedagogy and uh, others uh, in short, uh, this is my discussion or lecture for today. Thank you.
thank you, sir. Uh, we are really enriched by the valued and inspiring speech of Dr. Saver Ahmed Chaudhary, sir. We really enlightened by the deep insight presented by him on the relevant affairs. Sir, despite your busy schedule, you give us your precious moment within a very short span of time to glorify this occasion. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Now, I would request the eminent resource person, Mr. Shajal Rai, Assistant Professor and presently Unit Coordinator of Peacemaking and Peacebuilding in Humanitarian and Development Studies at School of Social Sciences, Western Sydney University, Australia. Sir is currently on track to complete his research work at the Institute of Culture and Society, Western Sydney University. He holds a field in Gender and Development Studies from the University of Bergen, Norway. His PhD research project look at the ways in which gender, ethnicity, marital status, and geographical locations intersect with each other, and at the same time, influence to reshape gender relations in post-disaster context in Bangladesh. Sarah has authored a monograph titled Climate Change Impacts on gender relations in Bangladesh, Spanger, Singapore. He teaches at the Humanitarian and Development Studies program at WSU. Besides, he has a tenured position in the Department of Gender and Development Studies, Begum Rokai University, Rangpur, Bangladesh. Sir is a research fellow at the Social Science Research Council under the Planning Division, Ministry of Planning Ministry of the Government of Bangladesh. Now, I would request Mr. Sajal Rai sir to present his valuable views in few words to enrich the academic assembly. Please welcome, sir. Welcome. Welcome, Sajal Rai, sir. Sir, please unmute yourself. Can you see my screen? Hello, Dr. Dash, can you see my screen? No, yes, sir, it's no, no. not, not visible. Okay. I'm just trying to share my screen. Just a minute. Please share your screen again. I'm trying to share my screen. Can you see my screen now? No, no screen is not yet visible. I'm struggling to fix it up. Just give me a minute. Can you see my screen? No, no screen is yet not visible. Dear Mr. Dutch, I'm going to email you my slides. Will you be able to share my share the presentation on behalf of me? Yes, sir. Sure, sorry sir. for the sorry for the te te technical mistakes. Just a second. Dr. Amarnath Das. Yes, sir. Um, please uh, uh, take consultation with uh, Sanju. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. 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 
I, I have already emailed you the uh, presentation. Okay. I think you will be able to share the share your screen at the moment. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. I am. Yes, sir. I got. I got your uh, yeah. presentation, and I am trying to share it. Okay. Dr. Dash, have you been able to find the presentation? Is that trying, sir? No, oh, okay. Oh. Yep. This is the slide. So is the slide ready for presentation now? Dr. Dash? No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm going to start off. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Asha College along with uh, the, the organizer, uh, Dr. Amarna Dash, to invite me in this uh, international webinar. Particularly, it's really in such an interesting and uh, talked about isn't that that has drawn the global attentions. So I am going to set up a very different angle to continue this lecture. And the title of this brief lecture is Teaching and Learning International Development During the Crisis of COVID-19. So we are living in the post-COVID world where the academic folks particularly the teachers in international development and LARPNA, that is our student and international development practitioners, uh, are required to take some steps and strategy to continue the learning and practice of international development. Next slide, please. So this is me and I, my academic institution have been detailed by Assistant Professor Dr. Dash. Next slide, please. Yep. So in this talk, I'm going to cover five key aspects. First of all, what does international studies offer to us, particularly in the post-pandemic situations? And there has been a shift in teaching and researching agenda of international development since the global financial crisis that happened just 10 to 11 years ago. And why and how the integration of teaching and learning philosophy used in human computer interactions has become or has become a growing talked of agenda in the international development studies, and particularly how this practice is being reshaped in the post-COVID teaching context, particularly uh, in South Asia, uh, countries like India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka 
and um, Maldives, uh, students, both the students and the teachers, academic institutions, they have been juggling and struggling for the quick and fastest internet connection because we know that there has been a clear digital divide and digital discrimination in terms of accessing high-speed internet that may connect both the teachers and the students in the international classroom. And this is because as there is no physical classroom in COVID-19 across the globe, universities are absolutely shut down, but the presence of university and digital platform is available. Therefore, I argue there has been an increasing dependency on digital platforms such as Zoom, Moodle, and Views technology. Using this online teaching and learning platform, both the students, teachers, and the professional staffs have been encountering significant fatigue. And we see there has been a little engagement between the teaching and the learning communities. So in this lecture, I'm going to articulate what I think about the future of blended teaching and learning model resulting from the new normal context. Next slide, please. So the United Nations uh, adopted the 17 goals of SDZ, of which goal four that ensure that suggests to ensure quality education goal eight that emphasizes on decent work on economic growth and goal 17 that emphasizes in building partnership to achieve the goals are really really significant in understanding the broader application of university education particularly the emphasis of international development Tony Beans, a famous professor in international development at the University of Otago, defines international development in a way that international development is a transdisciplinary academic discipline that is committed to improve life and living conditions of people of all socioeconomic and political status. International development as an academic discipline emerged during 1970s. Since the 1970s to 2020, in this 50 years, there has been a significant shift in development studies, particularly uh, during the earlier days at the University of Sussex in IDS, the key focus of international development included four main agendas. Those agendas were reduction of poverty, reduction of employment, a reduction of inequalities and reduction of socioeconomic and structural inequalities. On one hand, these particular applications of international development traced the ongoing crisis and sociopolitical and economic tensions across the globe. On the other hand, it emphasizes the role of technology in teaching and learning international development platforms. It was further investigated by several academic conferences as well as the United Nations Development Agenda that were followed and subsequently established by Millennium Development Goal and Sustainable Development Goal. Next slide, please. So, in this slide, we can see that international development deals with economy, politics, development, statistical and practical implications of development and rethinking the socioeconomic and political dimensions of development. So there are pillars of development. And nowadays, in COVID context, we are discussing to ensure the safety, security, health-seeking behavior, and particularly health interventions of the state that will ensure a sustainable environment, particularly physical environment, that will allow both the teachers and students to connect it in the globe, connected with a digital platform where they will aid each other not only to develop the learning content, but also learning from the COVID late socioeconomic and political crisis. We are quite aware that since COVID 19, there has been a significant decline in the global multilateralism. 
because the trade war between China and USA has been significantly fueled. This is because the diplomatic relationship between China and US, along with China and Australia, has significantly declined. It has significantly impacted the academic institutions across Australia. Last week, there was an opinion piece in The Guardian where it was stated that more than 500 full-time academics have lost their employment at the University of New South Wales and Australian National University. It hints that lack of international students, extremely limited numbers of international students are coming to study in Australia. In South Asia, education, particularly international development at education, is defined and portrayed as an academic discipline where it is treated as the center for learning and gaining knowledge. But in contrast, in advanced economy like UK, like Ireland, like uh, US and Canada, they consider um, academic, industry, academic institution as an industry. So this industry in post-COVID crisis are receiving extremely limited amount of student for which the employment of the academics along with the recruitment tendency of the university has significantly de declined. So we need global interventions and state-led intervention. Next slide, please. Therefore, the key motivations or the underlying motivations of this talk has originally come from two, two interesting books. And the first book is uh, about the narrowing corridor that highlights state, the roles of states and society in the fate of declining of the liberty. While the second book deals with geography of international development. This book, written and edited by uh, Professor Tony Binns, gives a holistic idea that the extent to which international development should be practiced by the students, by the teachers, by the academics, and by the development organizations and the international development practitioners. Globally in, in South Asia, even in West Africa, even in East Africa, uh, addressing the poverty issues, addressing the public security, addressing personal security as uh, public goods has become talked about agenda. So these books tells us the ways in which the international development agenda is continually being shaped and transformed and how technology, particularly the applications of different platforms, application of human interaction, human computer interactions technologies, applications of artificial intelligence is influencing the curriculum design and the classroom environment and the learning activity of the students. Also, it hints that how the teachers and the academics and researchers should equip themselves to fit or adopt the, uh, with the challenges emerging in the post-COVID world. Next slide, please. So in this slide, uh, I'm showing you two books. One, Why Nation Fails, particularly considering the case of fragile states. In the fragile states, we know that there is weak governance, there is lack of active engagement of the citizens within the universities, uh, within the universities and in the public bureaucracy process. So if we look at the index of the failed states, we'll see that in most of the South Asian countries, there is weak democracy and the fruits of democratic governance are not being equally distributed. Therefore, the universities in global South countries needs to build up partnership with those institutions, academic institutions who teach international development. So international development institute like Sussex at the IDS, uh, they have established multilateral agencies and they have established well-established academic reputations with the global south institutions to strengthen the capacities of the universities strengthening the capacities of the state strengthening the capacity of the development professionals strengthening strengthening the capacity of the bureaucrats in order to increase the successful implementations of the three specific SDG goals that I discussed earlier. Next slide, please. So um, 
Due to COVID-19 pandemic, we can see in this slide that now out of 10 students across the globe have been disconnected or are not uh, showing themselves in the physical or online classroom. Globally, 1.5 billion students in the pre from pre-primary school to tertiary level educations are not gaining the test of physical classroom. And particularly in South Asia, particularly in the context of Bangladesh, India, and Nepal, I have been connected with academic institutions and several departments where the academics are intending to offer the, the courses and the lectures and the online learning activity through the uh, Google uh, Meet or the Zoom platforms. But there is a significant interruption of the classroom and the learning activity. And particularly, we can see there is a little engagement of the students. While they take part in the class, while they take part in the class, they don't raise their voice. Due to the threat to safety and security issues and the privacy issues, students don't turn on their camera while they sit on in the online classroom. This is because the classroom environment doesn't become very much interactive and engaging. So in this particular context, in post-COVID world, what kind of pedagogical challenge this academic industry in South Asia across the advanced industries is going to face? The challenges are heaps. First of all, there is a significant decline of students' number enthusiastic to read in international development. Because we, in the post-COVID world, there will be the significant dependency of the internet. There is a field of study called Internet of Things. So internet economy is going to be boom very seriously, particularly in the field of internet of things. Students from computer science, students from science, technology, and mathematics, they will be obtaining much more priority in the employment market. So to what extent international development studies will be increasing its application to the broader world, to the broader academia, to continue its appeal? Next slide, please. Please. So in order to strengthening the capacity of technology facilitated learning and uh, learning and teaching model, the James Cook University in Australia have come up with eight key different strategies that was developed in 2017. The first strategy, the academics and the academic council of the universities needs to develop curriculum and learning materials that are aligned, available and engaging. Particularly in South Asian context, I know my students and and our students in India, Nepal, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, they do struggle to download and access online resources like an important article. They don't have access to the Google Scholar because we are not entering into the open access world. It is highly expensive. So to what extent state is going to invest to take care in the development and curriculum and learning materials? Second task involves the design of assessment that are aligned, available, and engaging, including informative assessment. So in a post-COVID world, the students have started to hit enjoying 25 minutes or one hour lecture. Students expect much more platform and much more uh, freedom and flexibility in sharing their opinions. So this opinion-based and task-based learning assessment has to be developed. Students are provided with opportunity to interact with the peers, particularly in the Zoom function. Uh, in, Zoom, in Zoom platform, there is a function called breakout sessions. Uh, in the advanced economies and uh, in Australian universities, academics are always encouraged to put students in the breakout rooms where they will be discussing the key prompt of the questions which are aligned with their broader learning outcomes. And academics are always encouraged to allow students to raise their voice, although they feel shy. And the next part, the fourth point that I am making is that students are provided with provided opportunities not only to interact with their peers or mates, but also with the staff. To what extent in South Asia, the traditional academics open the opportunities for the students to continually communicate with them via face-to-face -face or in physical classroom context. So there is a distance between the academics and the students. In one hand, students can't realize the professional attitudes and manners 
that they need to develop, which is a part of their professional development. On, uh, on the other hand, the academics allow the postgraduates who are much more equipped with the professional understanding and knowledge. The sixth point that I am making is that students are provided with appropriate learning support. To what extent both the public and private universities in South Asia are prepared to provide adequate technology facilitated learning opportunities to the students? As I have claimed in the previous slide that South Asian economy and the, and the institutions are relatively poor in terms of spending big amount of money for the students, enabling them to connect it with the technology. Even there is a central learning platform, online learning platform like, like Moodle, Views, or Carp that can be utilized or administered to facilitate the student's learning environment. The seventh point that I am making here, students are supported in understanding of their career choice, particularly in South Asian context. Uh, uh, I can share my experience uh, with regards to the students' preparation for the job in the civil services. What they learn in the university, it is not at all concerned with the recruitment process or, or getting the job. So in South Asia, the pedagogical training that we offer in broader social sciences is absolutely theoretical knowledge. The students learn Marxism, they learn, uh, they learn post-colonialism, they learn theories related to economic growth, they learn theories around cultural studies, they learn pedagogical approach, they learn so many theoretically enriched vocabulary. But there is a serious gap between the learning of the theories and application of those theories in the employment market. Um, this, for instance, in the Indian civil services examination, very few students, those who study engineering science, hardly motivated to come to the civil services. They do come to the civil services, but the, the preparation manual uh, for them to prepare themselves in civil services job is absolutely different in compared to the curriculum that they undergo during their bachelor's and master's career. So this, uh, even something remains for the uh, recruitment process in the Bangladesh civil services examinations, even in the NGO sectors, in the private sectors, or even in the corporate worlds. So in South Asia, we can easily see that there is a gap between the theoretical learning and practical implications of those theories that with academics practice and teach to our students. At the end of the day, a master's student forget what are the courses they have already completed in their first year of the undergraduate studies. That means the learning context, the learning activities that we run in the class are not quite encouraging to the students. The professors come to the classroom with a very high level of uh, uh, colonized knowledge and when they deliver the knowledge, students are forced to listen to what the professors are saying. So we are not reflexive enough to receive the resistance or the critiques that is coming from the students. So I strongly emphasize in my talk that listening or tracking the students' voices and particularly what they want, that has to be considered while developing the learning activities and learning learning in the classroom and taking the leadership in the classroom is a two-way process. In the next slide, I'm going to detail it. Next slide, please. So uh, I had a long conversation with one of my very good academic friends who is teaching in international development studies at the Zems Cook University. Recently, he has written a blog about pedagogical approach in post-COVID context. I'm just quoting from my co-author and friend, Sim. Sim believes that during the pandemic situations, we need a reflexive pedagogy. Reflexive pedagogy allows the student adequate room to learn them actively. They will be learned by doing. So what do we need? We need the application of critical theory and practice-oriented skills. For instance, in the Zoom platform, we can allow the students a write of 10 line poems about the subject. Like in the city of Calcutta, I know that in the market, there is a heaps of supply of Hilsha fish. Students can write down a poem that to what extent the supply of Hilsha fish from India to Bangladesh has really made a good political and, uh, and diplomatic connections. Students can write a poem to demonstrate their effective learning process. Second case that I am making is the creative learning. So writing poem is one of the 
very interesting ways to allow the students and also allowing the academics to reflect on their thoughts in a very artistic way. Of course, the academics in social science, we are not poet, but our teaching style can be poetic. We can allow students to write down blog. For instance, if, if we are teaching a course on macroeconomy or the uh, growth theory of Harold Domar, or let's tell the growth theory of Professor Rosto. In the Rosto's economic growth theory, the last stress is about the take up. You know, the from primitive stage to take up, society is equipped, or society equips themselves through the technological intervention. So, technology led development allows the student and the professional community to reflect on what they're thinking. We think so many ideas and agendas, but very few students are active enough to plot or to place those thinking in pen and paper. That's why I encourage both the students and academics to write academic blogs in online platform. These blogs can be written in weeks. These blogs can be written in Facebook. These written blogs can be written in another platform where students can hide their identity, but still they can be reflective. That may ensure their effective learning process. The third point that I am making an encouraging learning environment. In South Asia, uh, we know that teaching is not interdisciplinary. Those who, those who practice computer science, even those who practice uh, political science, those who practice biology, they do hardly feel why the knowledge that they are producing is going to help the students' community. Maybe a student's reading in Bengali language and literature. Maybe students, a student's uh, studying in um, music. Why is he or she should, should, should learn the anthropological claims of music? Why a student in computer science should learn the applications of software and post-COVID-led digital platforms to do better for the human well-being. Therefore, so when we teach, we as academic teach, uh, teach, we need to draw, I suggest to draw the transdisciplinary teaching approach. That may include playing roles, showing postcard to students, leveling different diagrams, and allowing and appreciating the students that they are the key drivers of international development. They are the one going to run the wheel of the international development. They are the one who has the capacity and potentials to mitigate challenges. In this case, I would like to emphasize the quote uh, that has been given by another famous academics in in uh, ideas, uh, his name is Terry Cannon. Terry Cannon suggests that their society has always been underwent through different vulnerabilities. So in pre-COVID context, the university teaching in, in particularly international development was uh, ignored academic disciplines. Even many people at, in, in advanced economies, in, uh, in middle class economy, in middle income economies, or even in the big countries, they do hardly know what does the academic discipline of international development offer. But in post-COVID world, as I argued previously, that multilateralism has significantly declined, but it has created some new prospect for the blended teaching and learning. Now let me detail what are those newly uh, prospects that has been created. First of all, there has been heaps of offer to be digitally connected to brush up and improving the digital skills, both for the students and both for the academics. So it is a good way to complete advanced level uh, online courses to facilitate our teaching skills, learning skills. I always tell that, I always believe that academics are also learners. In the classroom context, I define the scholars, like I, I define the tutors and lecturers as senior scholars, while the students are encouraged to think themselves as junior scholars. And a scholarly environment really, really needs to be discussing highly professional issues and highly talked about issues. It is one of the prospects that has been created in post-COVID world. In post-COVID world, we need to create we need to create a global solidarity through the exchanging of our ideas. During the initial phase of COVID-19, the pace of globalization was significantly reduced. 
due to the closing down of the borders. Gradually, the borders are opening up. Ideas are traveling through. In this time, both the academics and the students, those who will be able to pick up the advantages of Internet of Things and Internet economy, they will be in a better position to compete themselves in the broader employment market in international agencies like United Nations, like DFID, like Oxfam, or scholarships are also being offered in a large numbers in in advanced economies in order to advance the teaching and learning capacity both for the academics and both for the students. The numbers of scholarship offered by the US Department of State have become higher in the post-COVID world because in post-COVID world, the teachers in global south and in global north, they need much more advanced pedagogical training that will assist our students to engage with a solid academic context. Because in academia, we always generate new knowledge and challenge the existing knowledge, identifying the stigma and bringing the critics of the state's responsibilities that I have told in, the, in two of my slides. Next slide, please. So by addressing all the arguments and claims that I have made, I have I would like to suggest some development needs, both for the academics and for our students. In Bengali, I call them as Urwa. So the development needs, first of all, includes IT skills, extremely advanced level IT skills. Of course, for the students who are connected through these um, meeting, learning Microsoft Word is not an IT skill. IT skill requires substantive capacity in uh, in learning some softwares that can process our thinking and that can process the words that can process with the learning. We need extremely advanced plant-based future learning and teaching environment. We need to assess our own strategy. We need to assess the curriculum. We need to assess the state strategy. Therefore, I encourage the outdoor learning, which means learning in the web, learning through websites, learning by removing ourselves from the so-called physical classrooms. So we need to update ourselves through the one, through the new development of resources. For the academics, classroom management is really an important task. So it depends on the context and particular geographic space and the resources that you can avail. And both the academics and teachers should, should monitor the homework, particularly the academy and career development related homeworks. One of the big learnings from is that in pre-COVID world, there was extremely limited organizations of webinars. And nowadays we can see the increasing numbers of webinars where not only the student, but also different stakeholders are sharing their knowledge. And they're raising the questions in the digital platform. On one hand, it is a way of marketing their ideas and on the other hand, for consumers, it is a new way to develop their insights. Particularly for the uh, in post-COVID world, student-led learning will get popularities. So the traditional academic relations where subjective knowledge have been gained from the books is going to be declined. So the knowledge to be gained from digital platforms, particularly from the peer-reviewed sources, students will be benefited. It will help them to enhance their capacities on the subjective knowledge, such as international development. And those students and the academics who are uh, who, can, who would be able to advance themselves through the online engagement, they will be able to differentiate uh, differentiate themselves with those who are extremely dependent on the manual uh, uh, manual tips and tricks associated with the university teaching and learning on one hand. On the other hand, those who are advanced in terms of applying technology facilitated learning and teaching, they will be much more benefited to obtain the maximum benefits from the scholarships, from the research, from the fundings in the post-COVID world. So in my uh, 20 to 25 minutes talk, I have, this, I, have, I have tried to cover five key points. One, the issues of international development agenda and how particularly in the post-COVID world, the teaching and learning environment in international development have been shaped up have been constrained and to some extent, new prospect has been created in the renewed opportunities in the face of post-COVID world. Second, I have brought the arguments of three books. One of the books that was uh, is titled by uh, uh, Narrowing the Corridor where the state 
uh, where the, the debates between state capacity building and citizens' rights have been detailed. Also, I have argued the famous book of geography of development written by Tony Beans, where it has been told uh, in post COVID world and how in post Cold War period the teaching context and learning context have been reshaped. And then I have spoken and proposed eight key different strategies that has been adopted by the James Cook University to facilitate and the promote the blended teaching and learning opportunities for our students. And um, lastly, I have argued that how the application of critical theories and effective learning through the creating of interacting classroom environment and through the encouraging teaching and learning methods can help promote the digital pedagogies in the post-COVID world. That's all from my side. Now I would like to open the floor uh, for the audience to ask me questions. Next slide, please, Dr. Dash. Now the floor opens for q and A. I am more than happy to receive at least five questions. Help promote the digital Sir, the there is a question from Dr. Arun Mondol. Mm -hmm. What is cognitive engagement? And how can cognitive engagement be sustained during online class? Community engagement. Cognitive engagement. Oh, cognitive engagement. Yeah, that's a good, uh, good question. Uh, what I have, I, I am not a psychologist on one hand. On the, on the other hand, I am an advanced learner in the field of humanitarian and international development. So cognitive engagement comes through the critical thinking process. So the home task that will be given to the students in uh, advance will allow them to engage with the online learning materials like electronic books, short space, or five minutes video or a specific case study. Students will be allowing students will be allowed not only to describe and learn the outcomes of the case study, but they are encouraged to substantive reflect their specific thinking that will help them to promote their cognitive and intellectual development. And that research shows that the cognitive reflections and intellectual environment happens better in the physical classroom in compared to the uh, online classroom. As we can't go back to the, we don't know when we'll be go back to the physical classroom in new normal, maybe later this year, maybe early next year. But within the tension between the learning outcomes, uh, we have we can encourage the students to be engaged with online materials for their cognitive development. Next question, please. Yes, sir. There is another question from Toma Vishash. Mm -hmm. uh, how will be the dropout students be motivated to this digitalized of education in school level? Uh, that's a key question. In my lecture, I have drawn two specific points. One is the digital divide and digital discriminations. To what extent a person who is working in the Howard Rail Station has the capacity to buy 10 gigs of internet for the kids? And whether the kids and the parents do have adequate digital literacy for encouraging their kids to be engaged in the um, online platform systems. What I would say, the high school students and the, and the teachers should motivate uh, students to be digitally connected, uh, digitally connecting the demotivated students. On one hand, on the other hand, the universities, the schools, and colleges they should supply the advanced uh, cell phones along with free data for the students that will encourage them to come to the classroom. On one hand, on the other hand. The learning activity, you know, what we, what the teachers usually do, they they go to the classroom in the physical context and they keep reading and allow the student read, read, read this and the home test. No, there is a new trend of developing the learning activities. Learning activities has to be very very appealing using a simple language statement. That means learning through doing and learning through enjoyment. And learning will make people happy. You know, learning should be. Uh, space learning should create some enabling environment where demotivated students will be encouraged to talk. But the case is quite different in South Asia. So we need to be reflexive, uh, allowing the demotivated students to join back or returning them back to the class. Sir, there is another question 
Yep. From Sarath Gangwar. Is there any difference between e-education and online education? Um, number one, I am not a specialist doing my research on digital pedagogy or e-education. It is all about how we use technology. It has two different, what I believe, it has two different perspectives. Being an academics, I believe the way in which we integrate technology in delivering our teaching and content to the students, and how they how the content is being received by the students as a one dimension we can call it as e e learning or distance learning using technology it's all about how we apply the technological facilities or digital platforms to train the students about different things and how students adopt them so you can we can call it as e learning e learning is nothing it's all about applying digital technologies to learn what they wanted to learn that could have been learned either from physical classroom or from electronic equipment. Sir, another question is there. Yeah. Uh, please provide any example of la lateral thinking in blended learning. Lateral thinking in blended learning. Uh, I don't know uh, what the scholar is, how the scholar is defining about lateral thinking. Or I can give an example of how multilateralism can be brought in the online learning. For instance, let's tell um, in Western Sydney University, there is a course for the master's student and the course is called development and security. So, you know, if there is a secured uh, environment where development will be practiced, the development will not be sustained. What we can do, we can invite the respective resource person from outside of our country and they can share their uh, ideas and thoughts who have, who have proven scholarly aptitudes on that field. And the students can realize that it is an online classroom, but scholars and resource person are being invited from abroad to enlighten the students' ideas, depending on their thoughts. That can be one of the ways of uh, applying multilateralism. I am not a I'm not a theoretician in the state. I apply theories to understand how we can reduce the gap between rich and theory in international development. Any other questions? No, sir. No more question is there. Uh, uh, Dr. Dash, is there any questions from the student side? I know that there are many students are connected here. I would like to receive one or two questions from the student side. Mm -hmm. If any question, uh, if the students have any question, please ask by unmuting your microphone. I think that there is no more question right now. To my concluding notes, I would say uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor, uh, Assistant Professor Mamannath Dash and the Department of Education to invite me in this very interesting lecture. You know, many lecture, uh, many academics, they have their uh, own way of practicing uh, and reflecting on um, learning and knowledge advancement in the face of pandemic-led social crisis. All of we are stressed due to strict home quarantine, we all are compartmentalized to our own apartment. And there is really extremely lack of uh, physical environment to gain learning or to gain or to do or conduct. So the research that was designed in the pre-COVID context has completely changed due to the post-COVID changing in the teaching and learning process. So uh, international development as an academic, as an applied academic discipline is significantly reshaping its scope and employment, both for the teachers and for the students. So uh, in my lecture, I tried to pin down the focus and, and narrated the ways in which uh, we can promote the learning uh, and the pedagogies and the teaching materials to the students and how students can digest them to equip themselves and defend themselves to mitigate the loss and damages that they have undergone through the closure of the universities. And that's it. Thank you, sir.
we truly having a thoughtful and insightful talk by our eminent resource person mr sojal rai sir it was very useful and informative presentation it really makes us to look at situation in a different way we really enjoyed it sir very brilliant and insightful speech we had thank you so much sir thank you so much uh, for inviting me i believe that um, your department as you are the hod you will uh, continue organizing this kind of events for the student it will be very beneficial even i have learned so many things from the scholars to whom i am connected with in uh, different webinars in india in bangladesh in uh, in the united states and even in australia it's really a great learning platform so learning by doing learning through digital interactions is a new way to understand how this pandemic led a uh, social crisis but technological embellishment will be directing the design of the curriculum and some uh, new ideas that will really really motivate of our students who feel shy not to come to the classroom so uh, we uh, we don't believe in the pedagogy of the oppressed we believe in the pedagogy of the mutual engagement in online community have a good one thank you so much for inviting me i'm really happy i had the pleasure to talk in this platform with excellent audience and some really outstanding questions that i have been asked i wish all of you a sound and excellent academic wellbeing thank you so much thank you sir now i would request the eminent resource person mr mehraj dindar assistant professor department of education government degree college ganderwal University of Kashmir to say few words to enrich us. Mr. Mehraj Dinder sir worked as a teacher in the Department of Food Education Government of Jammu Kashmir from June 6, 2012 to February 14, 2017 and presently working as Assistant Professor Department of Higher Education Government of Jammu and Kashmir from February 15, 2017 to till date. He has left a lasting impression in the area of his work. He has keenly interested in academic affairs and has shown his acumen in the different discourse of education. He has published several chapters in edited books and several research articles and papers in different reputed journals at national and international level. He has at attended several seminars, conferences, symposium, workshops and presented a lot of papers in various national and international seminar and conferences he has published newspaper articles like predicament of college education published in rising kashmir 18 july 2019 and predicament of college education published in greater kashmir now i would request mr mehraz dinder sir to present his valuable views in front of us to enrich this academic assemblies. Please welcome, sir. Thank you, Ambarnath Dasji, sir. Thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir, perfectly. Okay. Uh, very good afternoon to all. At the very outset, I would like to thank uh, Department of Education, Harsha College, particularly Dr. Ambarnath Das, for enabling me to put forward my views in the webinar. Uh, so without missing much time, I have decided to divide my talk into three segments. Uh, the topic of uh, title of the talk will be Reimagining Education During COVID Times. Am I still audible? audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so the talk will be like here. It, in the first segment, I will be discussing uh, disruptions created by the COVID-19. And in the second segment, how have we responded? Or what was our response to COVID-19? And in the last segment, I will be uh, trying to throw light what consequences it will lead us to. What consequences it will lead us to if we are not careful enough. So starting the talk, uh, let me start disruptions what disruption is this covid has created as we know that 
uh, in the field of education, largest disruption has created in the field of education by this COVID affecting 1.6 billion learners in more than 190 countries. And the closure of schools was abrupt. It has impacted almost 94% of student population throughout the world and uh, up to 99% student population having low income. That means uh, vulnerable sections, that means low income countries, there the effect was up to 99%. And in India alone, uh, we are having 32 crore children from pre-primary to higher education who got affected by this uh, COVID-induced lockdown. Uh, making it uh, bad to worse, it is 24 million additional students or children throughout the world from pre-primary to a tertiary level may not be able to get the access to education or schools next year due to this economic impact economic impact of uh, COVID alone. And talking about uh, the social dimension of this disruption, which has created by the, the COVID, uh, the closure of schools is impending the, which, uh, as we know that we are already having some uh, existing disruptions in our education system. And this COVID has actually exacerbating that. We, it, has, it has made them more worse. In following areas, I would like to discuss it. For example, our children, we are, uh, 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 they, we are having the provision of essential services uh, to children like uh, nutritious food in the form of MDM, midday meals. And in the national policy 2020, uh, we are having now the uh, provision of even breakfast also. So this nutritious food was one of the services, essential services to children. Uh, we are not having actually the uh, privilege in COVID-19. It has affected, it affects the ability of uh, many. Uh, am, am I audible? Yes, sir. Hello? Hi, yes, sir. You are okay, audible. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, this nutritious food uh, which we were, uh, which our students were receiving, this was the casualty. Number second, it's effect, this COVID has affected the ability of many parents to work for their children in schools. And number third, it uh, this COVID will increase and it has increased the risk of violence against the women and children. Before this uh, COVID pandemic, uh, our education system was fighting hard to overcome already existing disparities, but with the onset of this COVID-19, it has exacerbating these already existing crises, like uh, uh, we got uh, reduced opportunities, uh, reducing the opportunities to access uh, to education for most of the vulnerable children living in the poor, or rural, or even slum areas. Uh, girls, refugees, or even persons with disabilities. Now, uh, in the second part, uh, we will, I would like to discuss how have we responded or how are we responding? Uh, educational institutions, uh, they have become responsive and proactive within the limited uh, resources at their disposal. As the shutdown, lockdown was abrupt, educational institutions were left with little window or uh, little opportunities to prepare for these impending disruptions. A shift from face-to-face -to, -face to online education was made by online platforms were setting up. We were online platforms were made operational. Some of them were uh, heard and seen for the first time by the majority of the teachers and students like Zoom classes, Google Meet, WebMix Meet, Google Classrooms, etc. Uh, besides TV, radio and distance learning, which were already in place. While using online education as a substitute, we need to look that no one is left behind and in, in doing so is possible also. When we say no one is left behind, that means children and youth already affected by the lack of resources Children and youth already affected by lack of resources or enabling environment to access learning carried out by a child rights NGO 
and uh, probably named it Smile Foundation in June 2020. Uh, that uh, the title of this study is Scenario Amidst COVID-19 on Ground Situations and Possible Solutions. About 56% of children were found to have no access to smartphones, which have emerged as essential tools for uh, online learning during coronavirus-induced lockdown. Making it more further, uh, worse, in other study, it was found that only 8%, only 8% homes with young members, that is students, have computer with internet connections. So this online mode of education actually has opened the doors for few, but what I believe it has closed the doors for many. So this was our response uh, uh, after the onset of COVID, we shifted towards the online system. And we have seen that people are glorifying uh, this online system. Uh, let me talk of, uh, about a few points. What consequences it will lead us to? Uh, we all know that uh, education is the dynamic force in the life of every individual, influencing is physical, is social, mental, emotional, ethical aspects of the development. And just during COVID, uh, we have seen the widespread uh, popularization of online teaching and learning. And this online teaching learning does have a positive role. I'm not negating it that this online learning is all, all uh, has, is is all, all about negatives. No, it has a positive role by being democratic, at least in enabling learners with knowledge, irrespective of caste, color, creed. About uh, boundaries, uh, cultures, etc. So, whosoever switches to Zoom class, he will receive the information like that. Having said this, uh, online teaching learning is not without limitations, and the primary focus of my talk will be this uh, limitations of this online learning. Education is not merely, as we are uh, learning it, it, is not merely the disseminating of information and knowledge, theories, laws, etc. What education actually is, what I believe, education is eloquent intelligence. Education is a sensitivity. It is sensitivity to self. Education is sensitivity to life. And education is sensitivity to world. Education is communion between the teacher. It is a communion between the teacher and learner, between the experiences of a learner because when we define teaching it is there earlier it was defined as and this definition still holds good it is their intimate connection intimate contact between the two persons that is the teacher and the talk teacher and the student so this communion of experiences and this communion of life is actually the essence of education Education in face-to-face -face situations has human touch or human element. And this human touch has the tremendous impact on the lives of students. Using technology, if we are using this technology, but we are using it without human touch. So using technology without human touch is, uh, that is human touch includes students and teacher, is rapidly making objects of most of us. That means I can literally speaking, we are being programmed into robots. We should not keep on legitimizing and justifying online education only and only because of technology. We are having technology, so we have to justify it, we have to legitimate it. No, it is not like that. Education, this online learning is can always be a substitute. Online uh, learning and teaching. Uh, should be a substitute and should never be allowed to replace the cordial relationship between the teacher and the taught. While uh, glorifying uh, this uh, online education, the teacher is being marginalized, what I personally believe, and the teacher's role in the process of socialization is of paramount in importance because uh, we are not only touching the mind of a student with the information or knowledge, but we are actually going through the process of socialization. This socialization process is of tremendous importance, is of paramount importance. In a physically embedded, that is face-to-face -face classroom, a teacher 
activates all faculties of a student, like in physical aspects, social aspect, emotional aspect, mental, intellectual aspect, which is not possible by way of online education. When we talk of online education, uh, we are sitting before the screen. The teacher is uh, in one screen at a student or other end of the screen and sharing the screen with each other will not actually develop, will engage the faculties that which are important. For example, emotional development. Latest research is suggesting that how emotional intelligence is important and how social aspect of a behavior of a person is important. We are all familiar about that. While uh, transacting through online medium, online teaching and learning, these faculties are not being exercised by the teacher. We remember from my favorite teacher. He is my favorite teacher. What makes a teacher favorite? It is not the knowledge, it is not the information, but it is the art. It is the it is the empathy. It is the reflexivity of that teacher which makes him favorite among the student. While uh, we need uh, creative minds and the creative responses from our students, we will. I would uh, throw light. Uh, uh, what I mean by creative mind is our students should know that they are the creators of culture. What we have done to our education system, we have become consumers. We, whatever is available in the market, we have become consumers. Uh, we'll discuss it more further. Uh, our students, they need to have a, they need to perform a transformative role. That is our youth and children are to transform their lives. First of all, they are to transform the societies and nation at large, not merely uh, receiving commands and getting adjustment and making adjustments. Student is not always to make adjustments. One more aspect which I would like to discuss of this uh, COVID uh, related online teaching, equitable quality education, uh, giving uh, apart from the digital divide, what we are looking, a linking of knowledge with social aspirations and not market values. What we have to do, we have to link our knowledge, information, engagement with the students to the social aspirations, not the market values. We are having the liberal, neoliberal discourses of consumption. Our greed has become normal. Greed is normal now. I am what I possess. Man defines himself what he possesses. We desire desire only we desire desire only beautiful statement a relationship between two humans has lost the essence when we talk of earlier classrooms in vedic period we were having the guru shishi relationship and this guru shishi relationship was very beautiful a guru was the embodiment of virtue which he was actually transmitting the realization aspect of his personality in his student character building preservation uh, of culture these were some virtues which a teacher actually was the embodiment of now what we have become we have lost the uh, essence between the we have lost the essence of the relationship between a teacher and the taught we have become consumers and it is a desire to consume. We actually aspire to consume more and more. Nowadays, with the result, what has the what consequence it is giving us? Markets are deciding now what is worth learning. Uh, a book I have read that is uh, what is worth that is the massive commodification of commodification of education. Teachers have actually reduced their roles as service providers. What are we doing? We are actually providing services and students, students, consumers of skills. Why from a child in this open, uh, when we call it this online learning, will raise critical questions. He's not able to raise the critical questions. Gone are the days when our students in classroom were raising hands and asking critical questions. That quality has disappeared now. 
We have become exam warriors. We have killed the creativity of our students. And we are taking, we are taking for granted that what child is nearly empty vessel to be filled with information knowledge. What we need to do is we need to develop the culture of empathy. For example, a young child, for example, a child is reading in class third, fourth, he's asking, she's, he's asking or she's asking question to her mother, why sky is blue? Why sun rises from the east? These questions, these type of questions are actually depicting how, but where, what we had done, we have put in his or her bag, 10 books, 20 books, even 100 books. So uh, what we need to do is we have to do the pedagogy of hope. Just our earlier resource person has said that uh, we don't believe on the pedagogy of oppression. So we need, so I am telling that we need the pedagogy of hope. A hope should be infused among our students as it was infused uh, we are as we are celebrating the Gandhi Jayanti week this time. So this Gandhi, when he was in the dark times, when he was in the violence times, he infused in the teeming millions the hope of the hope pedagogy of hope. So this hope, with this hope, I'm concluding my short talk uh, that we need to actually fill our two. Of hope. We need to tell them that no, we are teachers. We are, we are, we are uh, the real care caretakers of you. So one thing is that we need empathy. We need reflexivity and then care. So I'm very sorry for this short talk uh, because of some other engagements, other webinars. So I managed time uh, for you people. I'm very grateful for you people to allow me to say something here in this platform. And I'm highly thankful to our colleague for inviting me. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We certainly enriched by the valuable, valuable and inspiring lecture by Mr. Mehra Jinda, sir. His enthusiasm for the study yet shows through his lectures and his critical thinking to present ideas and relevant issues was extremely appreciable. We enlightened by Thank the you, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. We enlightened by the deep insight presented by you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, we are at the verge of the today's session, but before going to vote of thanks, we will have a song that is Nojul Giti, presented by Ms. Gina Takhtar. Sir, Shabar Onumuti niye shuru korchi. Ami ekta nojuri tige shomoti shomoti chhe ekta nojuri tige gaye. Kya man? Na Amara punar chhe apun je jhon khuji tare ami apuna. Amara punar chhe apun je jhon. Kujita re ami apunai, ami shuni jeno tar, choru nir dhuni shuni jeno tar, choru nir dhuni, amari piyashi ba shunai, aman apunar che apun je jhon. Kujita re ami apunai. Amari monero trishito akashi kaneshe chatok akolo tiyanshe kubhushe chakur shudha chorashe kubhushe chakur 
সুধা চোরাশি মিশি থে সপনি জুছু আপনার চে আপনি যে জন খুঁজি তারে আমি আপনার আমার আপনার চে আপনি যে জন খুঁজি তারে Thank you, Jeenath, for the lovely presentation of Najrul Giti and uh, creating this blending effect in this session. Actually, music and wisdom goes parallelly. Both requires systematic deliberation, either it is mu musical chord or knowledge that makes harmony. Thank you again for your wonderful contribution. Thank you. Now, it's time to vote of thanks for today's session. I would request Mr. Gaffar Ansari, Assistant Professor, Department of Bengali, and organizing member of this webinar, Arsha College, Purulia, to deliver the vote of thanks. Please welcome Gaffar. Good evening. Good evening, all of you. Sonajachik is there, so Yes, sir. Due to very poor network from a rural area, uh, so I, I just only unmute. Today's international level webinar on rethinking of knowledge advancement and pedagogy in pandemic situation. As organized by the Department of Education from our college, Arsa College, Purulia. First day program, at first, I thank you, the inaugural address by Chief Patron, Dr. Vidyapati Kumar. And I also thank you, the MIC government of West Bengal and the president of the governing body, Arsa College, Sri Santiram Mahato. 
though he was not able to attend today's webinar, but uh, his support of uh, support in every aspect of this college, it it is very uh, very. It is very, very uh, thankful to you, sir. And basically, I wish I wish to thank you, Mr. Uh, Professor Dr. Dibendu Fortacharya, sir. His speech charms me very much. Though I am not a student of education department, but uh, really it may it helps me to encourage the teaching learning process and i am i'm really really thankful to him and the next dr savir ahmed choudhury the eminent resource persons associate professor department of place and conflict studies university of dhaka obviously each and every one the eminent sir uh, the stunning speeches from their from their ideas they make very powerful and enlightened me and us and the eminent resource person another one mr sajal roy assistant professor of and unit coordinator of peacemaking and peace building in humanitarian and development studies school of social science western sydney university australia thank you sir you make us very proud and we are uh, really thankful to you and the another one eminent resource person mr mehras dinder assistant professor department of education government degree college gandalbal university of kashmir so many thanks and it was really a, a, a an enlightened one another speech that makes us very very uh, proud and advanced and ultimately i May thank Jina Takhtar, Miss Jina Takhtar, who sang uh, two beautiful songs. At first, the inaugural one, and the second one, the uh, last one. Ultimately, the the whole session was too good, and the next day. We will wait for uh, another one. Thank you, Amarda. Thank you, Gopher, for the nice presentation of your vote of thanks. And thanks to all respected personalities, eminent resource person, invited speakers, and participants for their kind cooperation and support. See you all for the today's. Uh, see you all for the tomorrow for the next session. of this webinar thank you and the uh, in chat box uh, many more participants are asking for the feedback link but the feedback link will be provided after the completion of this webinar the webinar is of two days and so after the completion of one full session the feedback links will be provided in the chat box of youtube streaming link and google meet so please Stay with us and be are be are with us. Thank you. See you. Uh, see you tomorrow. Tomorrow for the next session. Thank you. So tomorrow we will we will again meet. <laughs> Thank you. you. प्रायत्रिश मिनट डेफिजिट आसो हाँ बुझते